It's now 8.04 and I call this meeting to order. Uh, this is uh, Wednesday, May 11th, 2022, night six of the annual town meeting. Uh, again, if you didn't get your vote in for the attendance check-in, it's effectively just a test vote, so don't worry about that. Um, so let's, uh, let's before we get started, let's bring up the, uh, the Star Spangled Banner. Sorry, I was muted. Uh, just some brief opening remarks, and then we'll jump right in. Uh, uh, tonight, we're taking up a special town meeting, which has six articles. Uh, you can find those articles from the portal by clicking the button labeled STM 2022 docs on the left-hand side of the portal. Hopefully, you've already reviewed uh, those articles. We'll then take up financial articles, including the town budget, either tonight or on Monday, May 16th. Uh, then we'll return to Article 19, where we left off <clears throat> at the end of Monday's meeting. <clears throat> Excuse me. A quick note, a quick note on points of order. Uh, these are still being used in ways that aren't intended by the rules. Uh, so if you're wondering whether we skipped a formal step or, um, uh, or if you have questions, uh, I encourage you to use the Q&A, which we monitor. Um, and that way it won't interrupt the meeting. Uh, as I mentioned at the opening of Monday's meeting, um, and I, I posted uh, uh, a message to this effect uh, this afternoon, um, we're behind the pace that we're going to need to finish by June 20th. And June 20th is the deadline for us to have a budget in time for the new fiscal year. Uh, to help us pick up the pace, I'm going to try something new tonight. Uh, when we get 15 minutes into debate on an article, once the current speaker at that time has finished, I'll call for a straw poll using raise hands in Zoom <clears throat> uh, to poll how many members are interested in terminating debate. I'd like, to, I'd like these straw polls to finish uh, in about 30 seconds, uh, which is a lot faster than the official votes, which take uh, around four minutes. Uh, if the number of hands from the straw poll is 75% or higher, then I'll invite one of the members who raised their hand to move to terminate debate and we'll proceed to take an official vote at that point to terminate debate, which requires a two thirds vote as it normally does. Uh, if the number from the straw poll in Zoom is less than 75%, then we'll just resume debate uh, and go back to the speaker queue. Uh, speakers in the speaker queue are still free to move to terminate debate at any time. Uh, you don't need to wait for my straw polls to trigger termination of debate. Uh, and I'll continue with these straw polls no more than once every 15 minutes during debate. Uh, after tonight's meeting and before we reconvene on Monday, uh, I'll consider whether to keep or adjust or abandon this practice based on how effective it appeared to be tonight. Uh, some town meeting members have reached out to me to voice their concern uh, since I put this announcement out. 
uh, that shortened debate may skew the debate toward one side unfairly, especially if you have fewer speakers, uh, they might all be speaking to one side of the debate. Uh, to address this concern, if only one, if, if one side of the debate has not been voiced by the time a straw poll reaches the 75% threshold, I'll give the unvoiced side of the debate an opportunity to speak before selecting someone who wants to terminate debate. And hopefully it mitigates that concern. Um, so let's now, um, let's see. <clears throat> we need to take a, a few quick votes to adjourn the annual town meeting, which we've been in uh, for uh, uh, a couple of weeks now, uh, or a few weeks. And uh, we need to open the special town meeting, which will essentially be embedded within the annual town meeting. So let me just pull up right here. Okay, so let's see. Uh, Mr. Fosca, do you have any motions to offer at this point? Um, I move we adjourn the uh, the annual town meeting until immediately after the special town meeting uh, dissolves or to Monday, May 16th, 2022, whichever comes sooner. Second. Okay. We have a second. Uh, so Mr. Foskett is moving to adjourn uh, the annual town meeting until after the, the dissolution of the special town meeting. And we have a second from Ms. Brazil. Uh, and raise hands in Zoom. Uh, let's enable that. And uh, if there are any objections uh, to adjourning the annual town meeting so that we can begin the special town meeting. Um, raise your hand in Zoom now if you, if you have any objections to that procedure. Seeing none, uh, I declare that a unanimous vote. And so the annual town meeting is now uh, adjourned. Um, Ms. Roska, do, do you have any uh, motions uh, to open the special town meeting? I think that would be uh, the chair of the select board. Oh, sorry, uh, Mr. Diggins? No problem, Mr. Moderator. It, it is requested that the members of the select board and elected officials of the town, town manager, department heads of the department staff, superintendent of schools and staff, committees, commissions, and boards of the town, Minuteman Regional Vocational Technical School District Committee and Superintendent, members of the Electronic Voting Committee and staff, members of the General Court representing Arlington, and also any consultants who have been retained to work for the town relative to articles to be acted upon by this meeting and representatives of the news media be permitted to sit within the town meeting enclosure. Second. We have a second. I, I call the special town meeting to order. This is uh, Wednesday, May 11th, 2022. Um, we, uh, and Madam, uh, Madam Clerk, do you have a reason to believe that this meeting was appropriately called by the select board? And that the constable made a return of service on the warrant in accordance with the laws? Yes, I certify. Mr. Diggins? This move that if all business of the town of the meeting as set forth in the warrant for this special town meeting is not disposed of at this session, when the town meeting adjourns, it adjourns to Monday, May 16th, 2022 at 8 p.m. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, we have a, a motion by Mr. Diggins uh, uh, that if we do not finish the, the special town meeting tonight, that we will uh, adjourn to Monday, May 16th. Uh, we have a second from Mr. Foskett uh, with raised hands and Zoom. Let's make sure that's enabled. Uh, do we have any objections? Seeing none, uh, I now call for announcements and resolutions for the special town meeting. Uh, any uh, raised hands for that? Seeing none, um, ready to call for reports that are ready to be received. Mr. Is that you, Mr. Foskett? Yes, I have, I'm trying to answer the call for reports. I don't know what, so I just pressed the point of order. Charles Foskett, Precinct 10 and Chair. Yep. A chair of the finance committee. Yep. Uh, 
I uh, move that the report of the Finance Committee at the special town meeting be received. Uh, do we have a second? Second. Okay, we have a second from Ms. Brazil to receive the uh, Finance Committee report for special town meeting. Um, and any objections? Seeing none, it is received. Um, so. I believe we need to take uh, Article One, um, Mr. Moderator. I think we need to get a report from the ARB. Have that received? No ah, okay. I see a hand from uh, Ms. Zemberry. Um, yes, hello, uh, Rachel Zemberry, Chair of the Arlington Redevelopment Board. I move that the uh, report to Special Town Meeting from the Arlington Redevelopment Board be received. Okay, Thank we, you. We have a second from Mr. Foskett to receive the report from the Arlington Redevelopment Board for Special Town Meeting. Um, any objections? Uh, raise hands in Zoom if you have any objections. Seeing none, it's a unanimous vote. Um, please proceed. Ms. Zember. Um, did, did you want to speak to the reports or do you just want to speak? Uh, to no, thank you. I just wanted to make sure yeah. it was deliberative. Great, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Uh, Moderator, I move that Article 1 be laid upon the table. Second. Increasing we have a, a motion by Mr. Foskett to. Uh, lay Article 1 of Special Town Meeting on the table and a second from Ms. Brazil. Uh, any objections to that with raised hands in Zoom? Any objections to laying Article 1 uh, on the table so that we come back to it later? Um, seeing none, Article 1 is uh, now on the table and Article 2 of Special Town Meeting is before us. Okay, let's bring up Article 2 of Special Town Meeting. Okay, so this is a zoning bylaw uh, amendment uh, related to family child care. Uh, Ms. Zemberry, uh, do you, uh, as, as a proponent of this, as chair of the Arlington Redevelopment Board, uh, do you have anything uh, uh, to speak to about this? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Rachel Zemberry, chair of the Redevelopment Board. I'd like to request that the pre recorded video for Article 2 related to family child care be shared at this time. Okay, can we bring up that video, please? Hello, I'm Rachel Zemberry, Chair of the Arlington Redevelopment Board, also known as the ARB, and I will be taking you through Warren Article 2, a bylaw amendment related to family child care for the 2022 Special Town Meeting. The purpose of the amendment is to expand the 2019 Annual Town Meeting Zoning Amendment to allow administrative review of in-home family child care facilities. A special permit is currently required for family child care, but not for other forms of child care. The Massachusetts Department of Early Education and Care establishes strict standards for annual monitoring of family child care. As such, this amendment would remove a special permit from the ARB as a requirement. The ARB would add provisions for administrative review by the Department of Planning and Community Development for family child care to our board rules and regulations. This is consistent with policies in neighboring municipalities. The amended text includes the definition of family child care in section two and changes to the table of uses from requiring a special permit for in-home family child care facilities to permitted as of right when in compliance with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts standards for the licensure or approval of group daycare centers and subject to and in compliance with the Arlington Redevelopment Board rules and regulations. The board feels that this clarification is necessary to eliminate a redundant permitting process in establishing an in-home family child care facility. The ARB voted five to zero at our April 25th meeting to recommend favorable action on Article 2. Thank you. Hello, I'm Rachel Zemberry. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I have no further comments. Mr. Moderator, you're muted. 
Great, thank you. Sorry about that. Uh, let's see, do we have the speaking queue open? If anyone wishes uh, to speak on this, um, now is the chance. Um, okay, so let's take uh, Mr. Riddick. First time, first time speaking at town meeting, so I just want to make sure that I, I uh, coming through. Yep, you are. Just name and precinct. Great, uh, Ben Rudick, precinct five. Um, just want to say I, I think this is a wonderful uh, change, a uh, wonderful article. Um, I have two small children in uh, daycare right now, a four-year-old and a two-year-old. It is uh, phenomenally expensive, and I have a third on the way in a few weeks. And anything that can be done to make the opening of new daycare centers um, easier in Arlington is going to be. Tremendous, and I uh, hugely support you. Uh, hugely recommend you to support this. Uh, we have a desperate need for childcare in the area, and um, I also know as having worked to open, um, uh, attempt to open a uh, daycare for my synagogue, that the um, state permitting process is extremely robust, um, and uh, I have no concern whatsoever that uh, we run any risk by um, taking away this um, special uh, permit requirement. Um, as the EEC in the state is uh, very effective uh, at, at their review. Um, thank you. Great, thank you. And, uh, yeah. um, and congratulations on your new addition. Um, let's, uh, let's take, uh, uh, let's, I, don't, I don't believe we've heard from uh, Ms. Nathan yet. So why don't we take her next? Um, Sorry, <clears throat> can you hear me? Yes, I can, just name oh, and precinct. Oh, good, thank you. I just, a quick thing. I, I'm sorry, name, name and precinct, please. Oh, sorry, Michelle Nathan, precinct 11. I have no idea what this is all about um, because I have no history and I'm new to the town. So um, I couldn't, I didn't have any time to do research before I got on the call. So can somebody like, explain this simply so I have some kind of background and I know what I'm voting on. Thank you. Yeah, yeah so um, Ms. Zemberry, um, can you give a, a brief summary of this? Um, sure. Of, of, of what this changes in kind of in, in late terms? Absolutely. Uh, Rachel Zemberry, uh, Chair of the Redevelopment Board. Um, in simple terms, the, the current bylaw which requires um, people who are looking to open a home daycare to go through a process which is in conflict with a current state law, um, which refers to the, the Dover Amendment, um, which requires a, um, that the Dover Amendment requires that uh, that childcare facilities um, be allowed as of right. However, we do not have that currently in our bylaw. So this would uh, change that current conflict that we have and also remove um, an onerous provision. Uh, there still would be oversight by the town. What this amendment proposes is that instead of coming to the redevelopment board, which can be a lengthy process, that the applicants instead um, work together with the Department of Planning and Community Development for an administrative review. Okay, so in, in even simpler terms, uh, Ms. Zemberry, would, would it be fair to say that voting yes on uh, on this article uh, changes the zoning bylaws uh, to allow uh, child care facilities in more zones or in more circumstances. Is that fair? It, I would say that it allows them um, with, I wouldn't say that that's necessarily the case. I would say that it allows them as of right. So it allows them without needing to come for an additional permit. Got it. Uh, okay, I, I believe that an answers uh, Ms. Nathan's question. Thank you. Uh, let's take uh, Mr. Rosenthal next from the queue. Finally, it gave me the mute on mute. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Name and precinct, please. Uh, Mark Rosenthal, precinct 14. Um, I received a communication today from somebody in my precinct 
uh, regarding this. So I feel, you know, as an elected representative, uh, that it's my responsibility to uh, read what they had to say. Um, I'm just going to read a couple of points, not the entire email. Uh, but she gives her reasons as to why she objects to this as the following. Uh, one, living very near a family child care business can be a horrible experience. Two, the often loud noise from a family child care can happen early, all day, and into the evening. Three, the noise includes loud outdoor and indoor play, talking and traffic, some horns during early pickups and late drop-offs. And four, trying to sell a home near a uh, known family child care might hugely reduce the home selling price. So I just wanted to communicate to uh, town meeting that not everybody's in favor of this. Thank you. Great, thank you, Mr. Rosenthal. Uh, let's take Ms. Mann next. Name and precinct, please. Nora Mann, Precinct 20, move to terminate debate on this and all matters pertaining thereto. Okay, we have a motion to terminate debate. Um, so do we have a second? And we have seconds um, uh, from uh, Mr. Palmer, okay. Um, Okay. And so let's bring up a vote, uh, open voting for termination of debate of Article 1 of Special Town Meeting. Okay, so I will still be voting in wave, the, the enforced voting by waves. Again, if you're uh, if you're getting a message that your wave uh, has not come up yet and you need to wait for the next wave, um, we'll be cycling through those. Uh, so if you get first chance now, you'll get you know, uh, last chance uh, uh, on another vote. Uh, we do have a point of order if, uh, uh, from Mr. Wagner. If, if that's something that could be put into Q&A that we can address kind of asynchronously during voting, um, uh, I'd encourage that, but uh, otherwise let's bring up Mr. Wagner to offer his point of order. Let's see, is, is Mr. Wagner Thank able you, to- Mr. Moderator, can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Name and precinct, please. Thank you. Very uh, Carl Wagner, Precinct 15. Very simple point. I heard you say, maybe I'm wrong, uh, Article 1. I believe this is Article 2, just for clarification. Oh, thank sorry. you. Thank you. Uh, yes, this. I'm sorry. This is Article 2 of Special Town Meeting. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, in the future, like, that, that would be something that I do have the Q&A screen up, so I, I will be able to see that if someone wants to put that in there for a quick correction, but thank you. Uh, so this is for termination of debate on Article 2, um, the zoning bylaw change uh, related to family child care. Okay, we have, uh, we have 200 votes cast. We're still missing about 50. So we'll wait a little bit longer. Let's try to get these votes in as quickly as we can because that, that can shave off time in these meetings. Um, as I said earlier, we, we spend, uh, looking at the numbers from, um, from previous meetings, we spend about four minutes, a little bit longer actually, um, for each vote, including termination of debate. Um, and all those votes, uh, add, all those four minutes of voting uh, do add up. And so we can shave time off if we're able to get votes in faster. Obviously, we're, we're limited by the waves of voting that we enforce uh, because of the server load issues. but. Um, um, Okay, so now we're missing about 35 votes. Okay, so let's let's give another uh, let's give another 15 seconds. And you can always put your your vote in the Q and A. Can we get the instructions up in the Q and A as well? Um, I'll go another 10 seconds. Five seconds. Okay, let's close voting uh, on termination of debate on Article 2. 
of special town meeting and motion passes 88%, uh, 192 in the affirmative, 26 in the negative. Uh, debate is terminated on article two of special town meeting. So we'll just cycle through the screens. Um, If you missed your voting screen for your precinct, you can always uh, click the view, the view votes button on the left side of your uh, portal. Okay, so we've cycled through all the precincts. Uh, so let's bring up, uh, let's open voting for Article 2, special town meeting. And a yes vote here means that. Uh, you're in favor of changing the zoning bylaws to allow childcare facilities without requiring additional permits. Um, if you wanna keep the current uh, restrictions and the requirements around permits for childcare facilities, then you would vote no. Excuse me, Mr. Moderator. Um, yep. The title of this does not look right. So oh, that's not, yeah. This. This, Looks like we still have the terminate debate up. Um, I'm going to close this and start again. Okay, apologies for that. Sorry, thank you. Uh, so we'll need to make sure that that doesn't interfere, that doesn't overwrite the record for the termination of debate that we did the first time. But I guess that's something we can do offline because I believe we 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 have the voting records even if we repeat a vote. And so we'll just know that the second one was uh, was bogus. Okay. Okay, so now we're voting on article two, special town meeting for real, the zoning bylaw change related to family child care. Uh, vote yes if, uh, you want to change the zoning bylaws to allow child care, child care facilities um, uh, without requiring additional permits. And vote no if you want to continue requiring the additional permits um, beyond uh, what folks have a right to do otherwise. We have uh, just about 200 votes in. Let's try to get our votes in as quickly as we can. The sooner we get them in, because um, I don't want to close voting uh, while we still have a lot of votes outstanding. So the quicker we get them in, the quicker we can close voting. Uh, and if you have trouble getting into uh, voting through the portal, you could always uh, enter your vote through the Q&A, or you can uh, call Ms. Brazil at 781-316-3071. Okay, we're still missing a handful of votes here. Let's just give folks another 15 seconds. Another 10 seconds. Five seconds. Okay, let's close voting.
and the motion passes uh, 201 in the affirmative, 21 in the negative, and three abstentions. So, so Article two, special town meeting passes. Okay, so we'll just cycle through the screens. Okay, so let's now open uh, Article Three, Special Town Meeting. And and let's bring up uh, Ms. Zenberry again. Did you want to introduce uh, this this article for us? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Rachel Zenberry, Chair of the Redevelopment Board. I'd like to request that the pre-recorded video for Article 3 related to signs be shared at this time. Okay, let's bring up the video for Article 3, please. Hello, I'm Rachel Zemberry, Chair of the Arlington Redevelopment Board, also known as the ARB, and I will be taking you through Warren Article 3, a bylaw amendment related to signs for the 2022 Special Town Meeting. In 2019, a substantial revision of the signage bylaw was approved by the annual town meeting, creating clearer and more stringent guidelines for signage in our town. Since that time, the need for several new types of signage types has arisen, including signage for shared mobility stations, such as blue bikes and electric vehicle charging stations. The purpose of this amendment is to create a new mobility station sign type for micro mobility docking stations and EV charging stations. This new sign type will allow for wayfinding and community-oriented signage on docking stations and support an important element of marketing and funding for public mobility stations. Content of signage may be subject to select board review and approval. This new signage type, as proposed, is consistent with policy in neighboring municipalities. The amended text includes the definition of a mobility station, shared mobility docking station, and electric vehicle charging station, and general requirements for all signs with regard to location within the public way or private property. The table of signage types by district has been amended to include the new mobility station sign type, which is allowed by right in all districts. The amendment also includes the addition of specific regulations and requirements, including illustrations and diagrams covering the number, size, location, illumination, and permitting requirements for this new signage type. The ARB believes that this bylaw amendment is necessary to support these important public amenities. The ARB voted five to zero at our April 25th meeting to recommend favorable action on Article Three. Thank you. Great, right, thank you. Um, I'm Rachel Zenberry. Do you have anything to add, Ms. Zenberg? No, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Great, thank you. Let's go to the speaking queue. Let's take uh, Ms. Leahy. Lori Leahy, Precinct 21. Um, I'm assuming you can hear me. Yeah, yes, I can. Go ahead, please. Sorry, I just haven't done this on this computer yet. Um, so I just had a couple of questions. Um, will there be a limit on the number of these sound signs in the town? Um, and will they be illuminated all night, like day and night? Okay, so let, let's ask uh, Ms. Zenberry. Ms. Zenberry, uh, will there be a limit on the number of signs or will it be, and, and will they be illuminated uh, throughout the, the, the night? Uh, thank you, Mr. Thanks. Moderator. Rachel Zenberry, Chair of the Redevelopment Board. I'd actually like to um, ask uh, Jennifer Raith, the uh, Director of the Department of Planning and Community Development to address those two questions. Okay, uh, Ms. Raith. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Jennifer Raith, Director of Planning and Community Development. To answer the two questions, um, the limit on the number of these types of signs is limited to the number of docking stations that the town currently has in uh, available. 
So right now we have five stations, we might have six or seven. I don't project that we would have more than that number at this particular moment in time. So it would be limited to those stations that we have in place or docking stations, I should say. Um, the limit in terms of the number of those signs on EV charging stations would be contingent upon how many private charging stations come forward and wish to seek this opportunity to install a, a private charging station. So that might be, there may be more of those types of stations in the future. Um, so I do, I do not have a specific limit for those types of stations. Um, these would not be illuminated at night in either the uh, bike share docking stations or in the EV charging station. Thank you. Great, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Great, thank you. Let's take Mr. Kepline next. Hi, Mark Kepline, Precinct 9. I have a number of um, questions and issues uh, with this article. First is a, a bit about selectmen approving um, advertising content. Um, I believe that is in opposition to the Supreme Court ruling, uh, Reed versus Town of Gilbert, Arizona, where government may not um, have a control over the content of free speech and advertising and signage. Do you have an answer for that? I I personally don't. Uh, Mr. Heim, town council, do you do you have an answer to that about the the, uh, the case in Gilbert, Arizona? Doug Heim, town council. I'm not exactly sure uh, what the specific context is here. I don't think that anybody's suggesting that the select board uh, would approve the substance. I think what Mr. Kaplan is correctly referring to is that uh, the government generally doesn't approve things based on the message uh, of the commercial content in the same way it did once upon a time. It's not my understanding that that's what's happening here. I think that when we're talking about select board approval, I, I don't believe, and I, I'm happy to be uh, informed about this, but we're talking about the content substantively of what's on the docking station uh, advertisements. Thank you. So Mr. Hunt, do we know who, like who's the responsible party for selecting the advertising? Like, like who's the decider on that? In terms of the mechanics of uh, Doug Heim, town council, thank you, Mr. Moderator, and good evening folks. Um, I'd have to defer to um, either Ms. Emsbury or um, Ms. Ray in terms of who selects the advertising, but I, I don't think that there's an approval of content like an application as you might have, like, let's say if a rest, let's say that if somebody put an application in front of the redevelopment board or the select board for something, what the constitution doesn't allow is for us to favor certain types of speech over others commercial or non-commercial. Um, but I, I, again, I, I don't believe that that's my understanding. I don't want to take off all of Mr. Kaplan's sure, time, but sure. I don't think that's what's happening here. Okay, let, let, let's go to Ms. Rate. Ms. Rate, do you have an answer to the, who, who selects the uh, the advertising for these charging stations? Jennifer Rate, Director of Planning and Community Development. So I think there's two questions. One is the what the select board does in this process, and then what would happen if there was advertising at these stations. The first part is that Yes, the select board approves the docking station locations. And I think that if we were to have what we would call a sponsor of a docking station, this is at some point in a future in the future, um, should we need um, assistance in funding the operation and maintenance of the station, then we could potentially have a sign, one of the sign panels be reserved for that particular sponsor of the station. And if that was the case, it would be something that we would ask the select board to approve as part of the overall docking station approval. However, we cannot go so far as to um, have uh, overall, you know, the, the types of regulations that are being talked about would not be over, uh, cannot be overregulated by the select board, um, the content of that signage. Okay, great. Uh, um... Mr. Kaplan, you said you had other points? Oh, yes, thank you. Um, I'd like to give a little history. Um, the town spent many years 
working to um, eradicate uh, roadside advertising on billboards from the town and allowing illuminated, unassociated advertising again after Arlington, you know, worked so hard to eliminate it, isn't progress. And now the point is, I'm wondering um, why special treatment is being given for some for-profit companies, and uh, will others sue for equal rights? Uh, why are zip cars not included? Uh, and uh, why do you deny nonprofits um, another uh, unsustainable money looting, losing entities, similar signs, and un, um, <clears throat> and advertising? So, so and, and uh, by by certain uh, uh, vendors, are you referring to like to blue bikes in particular? Is that? Well, they're getting special treatment. So why not allow zip cars? Or, or other for-profit corporations to uh, to advertise along our roadways. Right. So let's ask uh, uh, Ms. Rate. Ms. Rate, why, why blue bikes and not other uh, corporate entities uh, participating in this? Jennifer Rate, Director of Planning and Community Development. Um, I think that we would have a process where, if we were looking for sponsors for a docking station, we would make that available to people who were interested in such a sponsorship for a station. And again, we would bring that to the select board for their review and approval. And there would be a discussion when they review it and we would figure out what the best sponsor might be for those locations. Um, why? Because these types of signs are everywhere in all kinds of communities throughout the bike share network um, that is currently blue bikes. Um, and it's really um, not we're not saying that these are billboards. They're not any different than if something was posted on say a bus shelter um, uh, or other locations along our main corridors. Not all of the bike stations, are, the docking stations are actually located along Mass Ave or other main corridors. Some of them are in other locations. Um, so I, I think um, the types of things that are being discussed here are beyond uh, the scope of this particular warrant article. And if they're addressed, they'd be addressed during the select board's review and approval process. Okay, um, who enforces uh, the sign regulations? So we're coming up, you have 15 seconds left in your time. So who Okay, um, for years, there's been a, there's a church that has displayed six or more signs when allowed okay, to yeah. refu officials refuse to enforce this. And Mr. Kepley, uh, we're out of time for, for your speaking slot. So we're gonna have Thank to move you. on. Thank you. Um, let's see, let's, uh, let's see. I believe we, have, we still have some speakers in the queue who are left over from before. So uh, I believe Mr. Quinn is next. Name and precinct, please. Michael Quinn, precinct 10. Um, I'm still trying to get an understanding of what it is we're approving here and how it would change for the blue bike facilities that we have in Arlington. So I was hoping actually that we'd see pictures of what the blue bike, blue bike facilities look like now and how they would look different in the future. Certainly when I come past the, um, the blue bike facility on Broadway near the Thompson School, it's a big obvious looking um, uh, setup that um, I don't think needs any further advertisement of its own to let people know that it's there, but Perhaps I'm not understanding it. So if we were to take that facility and now add additional, uh, this warrant article to it, how would the look of that facility change if it was um, done out to the max of what this article would allow? Uh, okay, let's see if, um, Ms. Ms. Wright, can you answer that? Okay, can, you get, can you kind of paint a picture of uh, how passage of this article would change the appearance of, uh, of these stations, of like the blue bike stations? Jennifer Wright, Director of Planning and Community Development. The appearance of the stations would not change. They would look exactly the same. Um, what this would allow is for that mobility station to have essentially a, the sign that you see right now that you just mentioned would look exactly the same. And it has a picture of uh, something promoting blue bikes. Uh, usually there's a, a photo um, on that side of the panel 
that has, you know, people showing people riding bikes and it says blue bikes. And then on the other side of that panel, it could be either uh, something promoting a community event um, is a possibility. Or if, again, there were title sponsors of an actual station, it could be something set aside for the title sponsor, or it could be both. Um, there are many options, but the actual physical sign is, uh, is, a, is a, a sign that is attached to the docking station, and it is there right now. Um, so you, what you're looking at will be exactly the same, but it will have, it may have other types of signs allowed. Thank you. Thank you. So as I'm understanding this, the whole facility stays the same, but now we're going to add or replace something that is there with commercial advertising um, as being the change to that and adding lighting of some sort in certain hours. Um, thank you. I'm all set. Great. Thank you. And we, we are coming up soon on the 15 minute mark, uh, as I promised, but we can, we can take one more speaker before we hit that mark. So let's take uh, Ms. Dre. Name and precinct, please. Good evening, Mr. Moderator, Elizabeth Dre, precinct 10. Um, I have a, some questions about the financials. I'm wondering if there's any idea about how much money this will generate um, and where that money goes, is it possible, does any of that advertising money benefit Arlington in any way? Does it come into our coffers or does it deduct, could it be deducted from this $100,000 that we have dedicated um, in future years? Um, so that's my question. And I just also like to uh, respectfully remind town meeting members that the proper term for our executive branch is the select board. Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Wright, um, do you have an answer for how the advertising, um, like the, that the, the revenue from advertising is used in town or where that goes? Jennifer Wright, Director of Planning and Community Development. Any revenue that would be generated from any signage would go directly to funding the docking stations in our community related to the bike share program. So it would all be, it would all go into that system so that it can operate and so that we can maintain it. Thank you. Um, so thank you. Um, so it doesn't go to blue bikes. That money comes into Arlington and we can use it to offset future um, financial support of the blue bikes. Is that correct? That's my understanding what, what, what uh, Ms. Ray uh, just, just described, yeah. Great. And my other question was, does there any approximation of how much money this will raise? Uh, Ms. Wright, do you have an, uh, an estimate on the advertising revenue? Jennifer Wright, Director of Planning and Community Development. No, we do not have any projection of what we would be seeking to raise or how much money we might be able to ra raise per station at this particular point in time. We're just creating a sign option so that if we did, if we were going to try to find sponsors for the stations, we would have the space to be able to um, showcase that. If we don't have the space, then we would not seek um, that type of sponsorship. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Great, thank you. Uh, so uh, Mr. Foskett has a point of order. Let's take that. Uh, Charles Foskett, <clears throat> Precinct 10, Chair of the Finance Committee. Uh, Mr. Moderator, does this article include a revolving fund to collect this money? Uh, Ms. Raitt, does this article include a revolving fund? I, I actually might defer that to the town manager, if that is okay. Um, uh, Mr. Chapelain? Sure. Uh, Mr. Chapelain, do you have uh, an answer to like, whether a revolving fund is associated with this article? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Adam Chapelain, town manager. Uh, no, no, this is strictly a zoning article uh, proposing to amend the zoning bylaw the establishment of a revolving fund would need to be done under a separate warrant article. And given, as Ms. Rate described a moment ago, that this is simply enabling the possibility of this in the future with no proposals or immediate plan to begin soliciting such signage, there is no current proposal to establish a revolving fund to handle any potential revenues. Thank you. And yeah, I apologize. That really is not a point of order. I probably I should not have allowed that. And I apologize for that. Um, 
so let's so we are past the 15 minute mark so um uh so let's enable raise hands in zoom um and let's see um so we have a point of order before we do that uh from mr leone let's take that mr moderator um uh, i'm bringing raising a point of order on your proposal to self-limit the speaking of town meeting members with your um, termination of debate, pre-termination. Mm -hmm. There's no provision in our bylaws to moderate the terminate debate. And I think that using this scheme that you're um, proposing is unfairly limiting debate and stifling the debate of the town meeting members on these important issues. We're town meeting members. We're elected to debate articles. If it takes us a long time to debate those articles, I believe we should be able to do so. I don't think we should have an arbitrary 15 minute debate time limit set for our debate. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, I guess what, what I will say is uh, that town meeting members have a right to speak, uh, to have a right to have an opportunity to speak on these articles. Town meeting members also have the right to vote on these articles and they also have the right to uh, call for termination of debate. Um, and it does complicate things to have a transparent speaking queue where we could see the order of things. Um, and um, I, I would posit that we are not doing anything that's fundamentally different than what we've done in the past. We're just doing it more openly, uh, which requires more explanation. And it, and it involves kind of showing uh, what might've been previously like the hidden variables in the system. So I don't see it as a fundamental change from what we've done in the past. Uh, it's present, It's being presented, I believe, differently. Um, uh, we have another point of order from uh, Ms. Nathan. Um, hello, Mr. Moderator, Michelle Nathan, Precinct 11. I just want to say I agree wholeheartedly because I do a lot of research and I know I'm new to the town, but I'm trying to do my best to participate and to be informed. This is going so quickly that my inclination is just to vote no because I don't know what I'm voting for. And it's language that I'm not always clear about, but more importantly, I don't know the history of these things. I don't wanna vote yes because it's not fair to people I represent. I don't, um, I feel like this is going so fast just to get this done with. So it doesn't feel very democratic. Thank you. Right, I would just say that uh, it, I, I'd say that it is democratic because this is, uh, this is uh, simply a straw poll uh, so that not just I, but the meeting can get a sense of uh, how many members, uh, what fraction of members are interested in terminating debate. Um, and, uh, and so it's still up to the meeting. It's just put, it's giving more signal, more information to the meeting about where other members are at um, uh, as far as a desire to terminate debate. And then, so if the straw poll does exceed a 75% threshold, then we would go to a formal vote uh, or we would allow someone the opportunity to terminate debate. Uh, and then we would take a formal vote at that point, which needs to reach the two thirds threshold. Um, and so fundamentally that hasn't really changed. Uh, so so now, I'm, let's see, do we, we have no more points of order, so so let's proceed now. So, uh, so if you wish to, if you're interested in like the, this is not binding, but if you're interested in terminating debate to see debate terminated at this point, uh, I ask that you raise hands in Zoom, uh, and I'll allow thirty seconds to do that. So it's time boxed, and and again we're, we're going to try this for tonight, and I will I will assess between the end of the meeting tonight and uh, the beginning of the meeting on uh, next Monday on the 16th, uh, whether this is something we wanna continue doing. And I'll take feedback over that time. So we're really just trying this out tonight to see uh, whether this is effective or not. Uh, as it, um, and let's just go another like five seconds. And so the threshold is, because the number of attendees, there's 240 attendees, there's 14 of those who are staff who would not count in the denominator of this vote uh, or, or this straw poll. Um, and so that would put the threshold at 170. 
So if we get 170 raised hands in Zoom, then uh, then I would consider that a trigger for me to select someone uh, from the speaking queue who's interested in terminating debate. And if we don't reach that threshold, then we'll just continue debate as we normally would. Uh, and I would hope that in the future, when we try this, like on, on say the next article, uh, we'll have fewer points of order about this and, and this will be a much smoother, quicker process. Um, so I'm gonna cut this off now. We've had more than 30 seconds at this point. There's 128 raised hands. And so we're uh, about 42 raised hands short of that three quarters threshold. Uh, so we're gonna go back to uh, continuing debate and that was completely democratic. And so hopefully next time we're able to do that uh, more efficiently. Uh, so let's go back to uh, the speaking queue. And we'll take, well, before we do that, we'll take a point of order from Mr. Wagner. And I hope this is actually a point of order. Uh, name and precinct, please. And folks can, can lower their hands now in Zoom. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Name and precinct. Carl Wagner, uh, precinct 15. Um, how could we tell uh, that that vote by hand was 100 and whatever you said, 140? How could we tell who voted and how many we voted? Uh, are you unable, as an attendee, are you unable to, because I see a different view potentially in Zoom than you do. Are you able to see the number of attendees? That I, have raised hands? I could see it a minute ago when, when I couldn't speak. I think you promote me to being a speaker a different way, but I'm, I'm sorry. Is it obvious the number of people who voted and who said yes and who didn't say yes by raising or not raising their hand? Oh, I see someone is, um, uh, someone on the panel is telling me that, who has more experience with uh, Zoom webinar um, internals than I do, says that no, that attendees are not able to see the number. Um, Mr. Moderator, then I, I respectfully ask that this system be modified if we must do it, that we, we should be able to see the actual number of people who said yes or no and who they are. Otherwise, I know none of you would do this, but how can we trust government to, to, to give us the correct number? Thank you. Right. Yeah. I mean, we, we need some basic level of trust. Uh, there's a number of people on the panel. Um, and, uh, and plus, uh, it would become apparent pretty quickly if I, if I lied and said that we exceeded the 75% threshold of 170 hands raised, and then we went to terminate debate, and we only got like 140 votes, then clearly something uh, fishy happened. So I think that's the accountability that you're looking for. Um, so let's go back now to the speaking queue. Uh, we'll go to Mix Pretzer. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, David Pretzer, Precinct 17. I just want to say that it's very important for Arlington to support um, alternate forms of transportation like biking. And so if, this, if these signs can provide an avenue to increase the number of bike share stations in Arlington and, and increase the opportunity for people to choose uh, more environmentally friendly forms of transportation that want to, uh, this will reduce congestion on our roads, uh, reduce emissions, and promote um, more environmentally friendly forms of transportation. And so I think that's very important, and I encourage folks to vote for this proposal. Uh, thank you. Great, thank you. Uh, let's take Ms. Hyam next. Leba Hyam, Precinct 15. I move to terminate debate on the article and all matters before it. Okay, so we have a motion to terminate debate. Um, uh, but first, we have a point of order from Ms. Leahy. And I will point out uh, while we're bringing up Ms. Leahy, just that uh, the straw poll that I that I uh, did earlier, I believe the number was one hundred and was one hundred and forty. Um, so I don't remember the number now, but uh, hopefully Ms. Hyam took note of that so that we would know whether we're actually uh, at the threshold or, or not for two thirds. Ms. Leahy, your point of order, please. Name and precinct. Lori Leahy, Precinct 21. I would like to know if I'm able to um, propose an amendment, and if so, how would I do that? Um, at this stage, well, we have a motion to terminate debate. Uh, so uh, if that vote passes the two thirds threshold, then the debate is over. Um, uh, otherwise, if debate continue, if that vote fails to terminate debate and, and uh, 
and we return to the speaking queue to continue debate, then speakers from the speaker queue uh, can move to amend the main motion of Article 3. And if Thanks. it's if it's simple enough, I may accept it. If there's nuance or subtlety to it, um, you know, we'll have to take it from there. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Murray. Uh, so we have a motion to terminate debate uh, by Ms. Hyam. And uh, did we get a second for that? It looks like we got a second from Mr. Moore. And so let's bring up, um, a vote to terminate debate, or this is a two thirds vote. So if you're, in, if you're in favor of terminating debate on article three of special town meeting uh, about creating a new sign type, then vote yes to terminate debate. Uh, if you want to continue to, if you want to continue to debate, uh, then you want to vote no. I think that's. We have about 200 votes cast, so let's try to get the remaining 40 or so votes in as quickly as we can. There were, uh, I'll take this while we're waiting for those votes to come in. There was a question uh, earlier in the q and I don't see it there now, that uh, how would I, as the moderator, know uh, if I did it one of these straw polls um, and I wanted to offer an opportunity to an unvoiced side of the debate to speak, how would I know uh, who was going to voice the other side of the debate. Uh, and the way that I would do that, I did, I did this a similar approach with the uh, resolution that we had the other night where I would ask for raise hands for someone who wants to speak to the other side of the debate that has not been voiced. And I would pull that person uh, to the front of the speaking queue. So we're voting here on termination of debate of article three, the special town meeting. Uh, we still have, an, Several outstanding votes. Um, just well, just a handful of fo from folks who are uh, have been active in the portal recently. Let's just give another fifteen seconds uh, for last chance to vote. If they could always enter in the Q and A if you're having trouble through the portal, but the portal's been pretty reliable lately. Ten seconds, five seconds, and then we'll close voting on termination of debate of Article Three. Okay, let's close voting. Okay, and the vote passes, 77%, um, 174 in the affirmative, 50 in the negative. Let's see. Debate is terminated. Um, and so another a time-saving measure that we could have here since we may have a lot of these votes in terminating debate um, uh, across articles. Um, we probably don't need to cycle through these screens. So I'll ask, especially for the, for the main motions, we will cycle through them. For amendments, we'll cycle through them. For termination of debate, um, I'll ask that um, if anyone wishes to see the screens to raise their hands and Zoom. Uh, otherwise, we'll just skip the rotation of, through the precinct voting screens for termination of debate. And hopefully that, that might take a little bit of time. So we'll, we'll try to do that next time. Okay, so the debate is terminated in Article 3, so let's bring up the vote for the main motion, Article 3. And there's no amendments, so. Okay, so voting is now open on Article 3 of special town meeting. Uh, vote yes, or if you are in favor of creating a new sign type, 
located at shared mobility and electric vehicle charging stations that allows advertising with lighting. If you're in favor of that, vote yes. If you're not in favor of the creation of a new sign type uh, for this purpose, uh, you want to vote no. So please try to get your votes in as soon as your wave is uh, ready or, or allowed to vote. We're voting on the redevelopment board's recommended vote of favorable action on article three of special town meeting for zoning bylaw change uh, uh, to introduce a new sign type. So if you want to introduce a new, if you create a new sign type located at shared mobility and electric vehicle charging stations that allows advertising and lighting, uh, you vote yes. And if you're not in favor of this new sign type, uh, you would vote no. Right, so there's a question in the Q&A about uh, that the enabling legislation for virtual town meeting uh, requires votes to be displayed. Um, I have asked Mr. Heim, town council this. Uh, he believes that given that the entire voting history uh, in the platform is available, um, that th the votes are uh, readily accessible. Um, okay, so. Okay, so we're still waiting for just a handful of votes to come in. Let's just wait another 15 seconds. This is a main motion of Article 3, new sign type. 10 seconds. You could always use the Q&A. Still, still five seconds to get your last vote, to get your votes in. And let's close voting now on, on the main motion. Okay, and it passes. Uh, 172 votes in the affirmative, 51 in the negative, three abstentions. Uh, and this requires a two thirds vote and it passes with 77%. Okay, so we'll cycle through these screens. If you miss your precinct uh, screen, and it goes by too quickly, you could always click view votes uh, on the left-hand side of the portal. And you're right, yeah, there's a question of Q&A about announcing the, the vote quantum. Yeah, I'll, uh, I will try to remember to, to do that like as we go into voting. Apologies if I, if I missed that going into this vote. Okay, so um, with, uh, with Article 3 finished, let's bring up Article 4. And this is another, um, uh, uh, another article from the Redevelopment Board. Um, so let's bring up uh, Ms. Zemberry again to speak to this. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Rachel Zenberry, Chair of the Redevelopment Board. I'd like to request that the pre-recorded video for Article 4 related to non-conforming single family or two family dwellings be uh, played at this time. Okay, let's bring up the video. Hello, I'm Rachel Zenberry, Chair of the Arlington Redevelopment Board, also known as the ARB. And I will be taking you through Warren Article 4, a bylaw amendment related to non-conforming single or two-family dwellings for the 2022 Special Town Meeting. This amendment was brought to the ARB by the Zoning Board of Appeals and the Zoning Bylaw Working Group. 
and resolves a conflict between a Massachusetts Supreme Judicial Court decision and the Town of Arlington zoning bylaw. Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 40A, Section 6, includes a second accept clause, which allows rights for nonconformities that existed prior to zoning codification. Massachusetts Chapter 40A and our zoning bylaw, Section 8.1.3b, establishes criteria for expanding nonconformities. However, our zoning bylaw, Section 8.1.3c, limits prior nonconformance rights, contrary to state law. This amendment affirms that a variance is not required for expansions of existing prior nonconformities that are not substantially more detrimental than the existing nonconformity to the neighborhood, while new nonconformities require a variance. The amended text includes the removal of subsection C from section 8.1.3, which is currently in conflict with state case law. The ARB believes that this bylaw amendment is necessary to maintain compliance with current state regulations. The ARB voted 5 to 0 at our April 25th meeting to recommend favorable action on Article 4. Thank you. So, welcome everyone. Okay, so let's uh, go to the speaking queue. So, we have uh, Mr. Jameson. Let's bring him up. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, Gordon Jamison, Precinct 12. Just in case anyone's confused, like in Article 2, this just brings us in line with state law. We really don't have a choice about this. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Great, thank you. Uh, let's uh, bring up Mr. Jockett next. And while we're bringing up Mr. Jockett, uh, Ms. Zembury, can, can, can you confirm that, uh, that this article seeks to bring our zoning bylaws uh, into alignment with state law? Is that accurate? Rachel Zemberry, Chair of the Redevelopment Board. Yes, Mr. Moderator, that is correct. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Jalkett, name and precinct. Daniel Jalkett, Precinct 6. I move to terminate debate on Article 4. Okay, we have a motion to terminate debate. Do we have a second? Okay, we have a second from Mr. Hamlin. Um, so let's bring up, uh, let's open up a vote for terminating debate. Okay, so we're voting to whether to terminate debate on Article 4 of Special Town Meeting. And what I will do after this vote, if, uh, if, if anyone is interested in seeing the vote screens, uh, you, uh, I ask that you, like after the vote closes, which it hasn't closed yet, um, so don't worry yet. Um, after the vote closes on termination of debate, if anyone is interested in seeing the vote screens rotated, uh, you can raise your hand in Zoom and we will show uh, all the precinct screens so you can see all the votes. Uh, and if it's unanimous and that no one wants to see those screens, uh, we will skip them. And those are available immediately in the view votes. Uh, if you click the view votes button in the portal, uh, those are there after the vote closes. So, um, okay, so we have about 200 votes cast. We still have uh, about, uh, about 25 missing from active members who have been active in the portal in the last few minutes. And this is a two thirds vote to terminate debate on Article 4. And just a reminder, uh, if, if, the, uh, 
If the last person in the queue is interested in terminating debate, if there's no one after them in the queue, debate would just naturally terminate, which would actually be more efficient. Um, of course, you never know if someone's going to ring in to, uh, to speak instead. So. Um, Missing just a few more voters here uh, who have not voted yet, but they've been active in the portal. So let's just go. Remember, you can always vote. If you're having trouble in the portal, you can vote in the Q&A uh, or call Ms. Brazil. Let's just give folks uh, another 15 seconds, 10 seconds. Last chance to get your votes in, five seconds. And this is for termination of debate on Article 4. OK, let's close voting. I'm looking for a two thirds threshold. If not, we will continue debate. And so it passes with 93%, uh, 206 in the affirmative, 14 in the negative. Uh, and now if we can enable raise hands and zoom, if, uh, if you want to see the remainder of these precinct screens, uh, you can raise your hand and zoom now and we'll leave the screens up until they complete through the last precincts. Um, otherwise, uh, we'll just skip this and people can look at view votes in the portal. Uh, just give people a few seconds if they want it. Okay, so we have one hand uh, to uh, uh, to continue the rotation of screen. So we will uh, rotate them uh, until completion. Thank you. Okay, and while we're waiting there, I'll. Okay, it looks like we're done. So let's now bring up, uh, let's open the vote for the main motion for Article 4 of Special Town Meeting. And if you are in favor of um, uh, changing the zoning bylaws to bring them into alignment with state law in ways that are kind of difficult to summarize, uh, you want to vote yes. Um, if you're not in favor of bringing the zoning bylaws into alignment with state law on these specific points, uh, then you would vote no. Um, and so when, you're, when your wave of voting comes up, please vote as soon as you can. We're still voting in the, in the three waves. So um, you should see a message in your portal that says whether voting is enabled or whether you have to wait for like a future wave of voting. Okay, we have about 200 votes in. Uh, still missing about. 30 or so from folks who've been recently active in the portal. So we'll wait a bit longer, try to get your votes in as quickly as you can so we can close voting. Down to about 17 active users. If you haven't voted yet, please vote. If you're having trouble in the portal, you can vote through the Q&A or call Ms. Brazil. Um, and if we haven't already, we can get those, let's get those instructions up in the chat. Getting close. Um, let's just give another 15 seconds to finish voting on the main motion. 10 seconds, main motion of Article 4, special town meeting. If you're in favor of bringing the zoning bylaws into alignment with state law, vote yes. Otherwise, vote no. Five seconds. Okay, let's go ahead and close voting. 
And this is a two, sorry, uh, I don't know if I mentioned, this is a two thirds vote and it passes uh, 213 in the affirmative, nine in the negative, two abstentions. Since this is the main motion, we will just go ahead and watch the uh, rotation of the screens through the precincts. We're now through three of the five articles in the special town meeting that actually require substantive votes. Uh, so hopefully we'll be able to, and we're about, almost at the halfway mark in the meeting. So uh, hopefully we can finish out the others uh, in the second half of this meeting and return to the annual town meeting. Okay, so we've cycled through the votes. Uh, and so why don't, let's, let's take our, uh, Let's take our 10 minute break now. And when we come back at, let's say uh, uh, 9.36, uh, we will take up uh, article five of special town meeting. Okay, so I'll see you in about 10 minutes, 9.36. Okay, let's come back now. And, and we'll now have in front of us uh, article five of the special town meeting. Okay, and this is a finance article. So, uh, Mr. Foskett, do you want to lead us off here on the article? Uh, yes, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Charles Foskett, Precinct 10, Chair of the Finance Committee. Uh, very briefly, uh, last uh, annual town meeting, town meeting allocated or appropriated a million ninety-four thousand fifty-five dollars to the Finance Committee Reserve Fund in the event that the school department uh, student population growth recovered to prior numbers. It did. Finance Committee did not need to use the funds, but the Finance Committee cannot um, transfer from the reserve fund to anything but a department. Uh, this article transfers the money to the override stabilization fund, so it's available uh, for, for revenue in next fiscal year. If it stays in the reserve fund, it would um, go into free cash at the end of the year and not be available for another year. So we ask your favorable vote on this article. It is a uh, simple majority. Okay. And let's say, thank you, Mr. Foskett. Um, and does anyone wish, if anyone wishes to speak on this article uh, about transferring roughly $1 million to the override stabilization fund, uh, now is your chance. Um, and if no one wishes to speak, then we can just go straight to a vote. Um, and please don't be the only person on the speaking queue and uh, move to terminate debate because that'll just kind of chew up three to four minutes. Um, okay, so seeing no speakers, uh, let's open up voting on Article 5, the special town meeting. Okay, so if you are in favor of transferring roughly $1 million to the override stabilization fund, uh, vote yes. If you are not in favor of that transfer of funds, vote no. And we're doing the, the wave-based voting by precincts, so uh, please pay attention to the message in, that you're seeing in the portal uh, about when you're able to vote. Some folks are being held back by waves to prevent overload of our system. Uh, so please vote as soon as the system allows you to vote. Okay, we have about 180 votes, so coming in quick. 
still need about another 40 from folks who have been recently active in the portal. Now just about 30 folks that we're waiting on. So if you're in favor of transferring roughly $1 million into the override stabilization fund, please vote yes. If you're not in favor of that transfer, vote no. Okay, I'm waiting for about 20 folks now. Please try to get your votes in. All the, all the, um, all the waves of precincts should be now uh, permitted to vote. So please vote as soon as you can. If you're having trouble through the portal, you can always uh, uh, type your vote into the Q&A uh, or you can call Ms. Brazil. I'm waiting for about 15 folks now. Just a reminder, I, I, I'm no longer calling out individual names. That was not a popular thing to do. Um, so just be mindful of whether your vote was act actually went through or not, whether you actually confirmed your vote. Um, before and before walking away from your computer, you probably shouldn't be walking away from your computer anyway in the middle of the meeting. But okay, so we're, most votes in. Let's just wait another fifteen seconds, and then we'll close voting on the main motion for Article Five to uh, transfer roughly a million dollars to the Override Stabilization Fund. About uh, ten seconds, five seconds to get your vote in. Okay, let's close voting on Article 5 of Special Town Meeting. And vote passes, uh, 215 in the affirmative, two in the negative, two abstentions. So we'll just cycle through the screens here. Okay, so we got through all the screens. So uh, let's, uh, so Article 5 is closed. Let's bring up Article 6, a special town meeting. And this is also a finance article. Mr. Foskett, as chair of the Finance Committee, do you want to speak to this? Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Charles Foskett, Precinct 10, chair of the Finance Committee. So the, the town has a long practice that um, when it makes, uh, that uh, it will make improvements to private ways, uh, but the uh, butters, have to uh, pay for these improvements through a variety of ma uh, methods, either directly installment or by a uh, surcharge on their taxes. Um, in in the last couple of years, the um, and, and but the town also provides has a revolving fund which provides working capital to fund these uh, improvements, waiting for the funds from the abutters to come in. So uh, the. Department of Public Works has been involved in some larger, more expensive projects. And this um, uh, article provides $100,000 in fiscal uh, 2023 as working capital uh, for these projects. And eventually all the money that is spent by the Department of Public Works gets returned to the general fund. Okay. Right, and so just to make sure I have this right, uh, this is for appropriating um, uh, $100,000 100, from the overlay reserve surplus accounts, which were released by the Board of Assessors earlier this year. And um, remember, we discussed that at the, at, at the beginning of the special town meeting as well. Right. And, and this is appropriate I mean, in, in, into the private ways, repairs, private way revolving. repairs. This revolving is into fund. a revolving fund. Into the private way repairs re revolving fund, correct? Y yes, sir. Yep, got it. Okay, uh, so thank you. So let's uh, go to our speaking queue. Let's take up uh, Mr. Revelak. Uh, 
Uh, good evening, Mr. Moderator Steve Revelak, Precinct 1. I was just wondering what private ways we've been repairing. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, let's bring up Mr. Rademacher for that, um, Director of uh, Public Works. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Michael Rademacher, Director of Public Works. I, I don't have a, a, a list of uh, recent ways that repaired um, available at this time, but I'm happy to answer the question offline. Uh, let's see, uh, Mr. Pooler has his hand raised, uh, Deputy Town Manager. Uh, good evening, Sandy Pooler, Deputy Town Manager. Um, the significant road that was repaired recently were, was Mount Gilboa. Um, it was about a, a $150,000 repair of that private way. Most of the private ways that we uh, repair uh, our fraction of that, usually twenty-five or thirty thousand um, dollars. So that was the most recent one, and then we're waiting for more applications to come from residents to go before uh, the select board for their approval of future repairs. And so we will know once those are submitted. Okay. Thank you, um, Mr. Revlock. Anything else? Uh, nothing further, Mr. Moderator. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Let's take uh, Mr. Francosa next. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Alexander Franzosa, Precinct 6. I was hoping to get some clarification as to whether this revolving fund actually contributes public funds to private repair or if it's meant as a placeholder until the final abutter payments can be received. Thank you. Okay, uh, Mr. Foskett, do you have an answer? Uh, yes, yes, sir. Um, so the, the revolving fund pays the vendors who do the work uh, under the direction of both the internal expenses and, and the external expenses under the direction of DPW. The, uh, when the work is undertaken, the, uh, the abutters are already liable to pay those expenses. Some may pay their share immediately. Some may pay in certain installments and others may pay through um, a surcharge on their taxes. So, um, this is essentially a, a working capital fund that allows the work to go forward as the payments are coming in. Okay, great. Uh, any other questions, Mr. Francoza? No, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Great, thank you. Let's take Mr. Moore next. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Christopher Moore, Precinct 14. I move to terminate debate. Okay, we have a motion to terminate debate uh, from Mr. Moore. Do we have a second? We have a second from Mr. Hamlin. Uh, so let's uh, open up voting for termination of debate of Article 6 of Special Town Meeting. This is a two thirds vote to terminate debate. Okay, so if you're in favor of terminating debate, uh, vote yes. If you wanna continue debate, vote no. And remember we were still voting in waves that are being enforced by the system. So if you see a message that your, your wave has not come up yet, just uh, sit tight and be ready to vote when your wave opens up for voting. And the sooner we get all votes in or nearly all votes in, the sooner we can uh, look at the results and move on to either vote on the main motion or to continue debate. Okay, we have a point of order from Ms. Weber. Can we take her up while, uh, while we continue to leave voting open? So Ms. Weber, I'll just uh, state your uh, name and precinct, please, and your point of order. Two 
Janice Weaver, Precinct 21. I don't know if this is a point of order. I just want to know why the person who seconds something is never up on the screen. What, what do you mean by that? Like not up on the screen? Like is the name not appearing? The person who seconds the request is never up on the screen. Like you don't see their name appear on the screen. Correct. I think we should see that. We did before, and I don't know why we don't now. Um, I'll take a step at that. Maybe someone uh, from the like from the uh, uh, from the tech side can give a, a better answer. Uh, I, a guess that I have is that all of our different screens are refreshing at different times, and it's possible that when we're moving quickly through the procedures like that, uh, that I see it on my screen uh, before you see it on your screen. Um, and it's possible that maybe we're clearing that before it shows up in your screen. Uh, so like what you see on your screen, like in your portal versus what I see in my kind of moderators portal versus what we see on the Zoom are not all synchronized. Um, and so, yeah, someone's telling me from the panel that, correct, this, this is likely a refresh issue. Uh, so sometimes you'll see it and sometimes you won't, depending on how the refresh timings of these different views of the system are, are hitting different folks' screens, if that makes sense. Yes, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we have 217 votes in. Uh, we're still waiting for about a dozen votes from folks who have been recently active in the portal. Um, so let's just wait a little bit longer. Let's go. Uh, uh, let's give uh, 20 seconds. So if you're having trouble with the portal, you can still uh, put your vote into the Q&A. 15 seconds. 10 seconds. This is for terminating debate on Article 6. Five seconds. Okay. And let's close voting on whether to terminate debate on Article 6 of special town meeting. And debate is terminated. Uh, 90, or I'm sorry, with 202 in the affirmative, 20 in the negative, and three abstentions, 91%. So debate is now terminated. Uh, if anyone wishes to see all these screens, um, uh, please raise your hand in Zoom. Let's enable raise hands in Zoom. If you want to wait for all of these precincts to show the votes on termination of debate, you can raise your hand now. Uh, we have a hand, so we will wait for the screens to go through. So after we get through all these precinct screens, we will take up a vote on uh, the main motion for Article 6, so the special town meeting. OK, let's, let's bring up uh, a vote on the main motion. Okay. And this is a majority vote. Voting is now open, although you might be limited based on the waves of voting to kind of rate limit the vote that's going into the system so that it doesn't get overloaded. Um, so if you are in favor of appropriating $100,000 into the private way repairs revolving fund, vote yes. If you are not in favor of that appropriation into that fund, you can vote no. See, there was a request in the uh, Q and A uh, just now about um, uh, could the moderator announce who is raising their hand to see the votes, just like we would, but just like we would for a roll call vote indicated by standing. I can do that. Uh, so it was Mr. Gersh, by the way, who raised his hand uh, uh, to cycle through the termination of debate voting screens. Um, I think it's a reasonable thing to ask. That's right. Yeah, yeah it's, um, as Mr. Wagner pointed out earlier, it's like the attendees don't see the same view that I do uh, from my view on the panel. So I'll try to remember to point that out. Thank you. Okay, we have 211 votes in, still waiting for about 20 from the recently active members. This is the main motion for Article 6 of special town meeting. Vote yes if you're in favor of appropriating $100,000 into the private way repairs revolving fund, vote no if you are not in favor of that appropriation. Uh, wait for about a dozen active or a dozen 
active uh, members in the portal uh, to vote. Um, let's give folks 20 seconds. You could always vote in the q and if you're having trouble through the portal. 15 seconds. 10 seconds to vote on Article 6 of Special Town Meeting. Five seconds, appropriation of $100,000 in the private way repairs revolving fund. And let's close voting. Okay, motion passes. Uh, 219 in the affirmative, five in the negative. It is a positive vote. And we will cycle through these screens for the main motion unconditionally. So just a couple more screens to go, there we go. And so article six is now disposed of. Um, Mr. Moderator? Yes, Mr. Foskett. I move that uh, article one be taken from the table. Uh, do we have a second? Second. Okay, so we have a motion by Mr. Foskett to uh, Mr. take- Mr. Moderator? Yes. Um, I move that the special town meeting be dissolved. Uh, Second. Well, well first of all, let me ask for any raise hands and submit <laughs> objections to Mr. Foskett's uh, motion to take Article One, a special town meeting, from the table. Uh, seeing, and we had a second from Ms. Brazil. Seeing no objections uh, through raised hands, uh, Mr. Foskett, proceed. Uh, Mr. Moderator, I move that um, the special town meeting be dissolved. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion by Mr. Foskett to dissolve the special town meeting, which means closing it. Um, Permanently, and we have a second from Ms. Brazil. Do we have any objections? Uh, if so, raise hands in Zoom. There's no more business to do in the special town meeting, so um, uh, objecting. Uh, it's not clear what uh, we would do um, within the context <coughs> of the meeting. Seeing no objections, uh, uh, I declare special town meeting 2022 uh, dissolved. And now, let's see. And so now we automatically trigger uh, what Mr. Diggins called for earlier in the evening, at the beginning of the evening, uh, which is that, uh, uh, let's see, we now return to the annual town meeting. So, and so we are back now at Article 19. Mr. Moderator. Mr. Foskett, go ahead. Yes, Mr. Moderator, um, I would like to make a motion mm -hmm. that um, Articles 19 through 47 uh, be tabled. Okay, we have, motion, we have a motion to table Articles 19 to 40 through 47. Seven, yep, uh, and we have a second by, by Mr. Foskin. We have a second from Ms. Brazil. Uh, the point of this, in case folks are wondering, is to skip ahead to the finance articles uh, in, which includes the town budget, uh, which we wanted to do on the heels of the dissolution of the special town meeting. So this is just the procedure for being able to skip ahead by tabling all the article, all the intervening articles between where we're, we were at on Monday and uh, up to the first uh, uh, open finance article. Um, we have a point of order from Mr. Slickman. Let's take that. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Paul Schlickman, Precinct 9. Uh, 46 and 47 have been adjudicated, so we're only uh, tabling up till 45. Oh, that's a good point. Uh, correct. That's correct. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. So yeah, we're, we're, we're laying on the table uh, 
uh, 18, actually 18, because 17 is already on the table, uh, 18 through 45. Um, it's 40, 19 through 45. 45. Oh, you're right. We already did 18. Yep. 19 to 45. Thank you. Yep. Um, Mr. I'll Foster. That was a friendly amendment. Great. Thank you. And, uh, and can we get another second on that? Oh, we have, we have seconds already in the portal uh, from Ms. Corbo Hudak. Um, so any raise hands in Zoom if you have any objection to uh, laying on the table articles 19 through 45, which would bring us to 48. Uh, so I have one, I see one objection. Uh, so it's not a unanimous vote, but it is uh, overwhelmingly a majority vote that I declare. Uh, so articles 19 through 45 are now laid upon the table. Obviously, any articles in, in that range that we've already disposed of um, uh, from the consent agenda would not be included in that uh, implicitly. Um, and so that brings us now to uh, article 48. So Mr. Fa that is a finance article from the, uh, from the report of the finance committee. Mr. Foskett, do you wanna introduce article 48? Yes, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Charles Foskett, Precinct 10, Chair of the Finance Committee. The uh, uh, various position descriptions in the town uh, classification plan um, periodically are mo modified, amended, added, or deleted by the Human Resources Department. So this article enumerates the changes that the department wishes to make in the pay and, class pay and classification plan this town meeting. The, uh, a number of the um, articles uh, have financial sum next to them, and some have no financial sum next to them. And um, the, um, the articles, the, the, the items that don't have a financial sum next to them have uh, no impact on the fiscal uh, 23 budget. Um, it perhaps uh, it could be for a variety of reasons. Uh, for example, uh, the position isn't currently filled. Uh, on the other hand, the uh, where you see numbers, this is where um, these are increases either due to step functions or other uh, reasons that are different than the uh, departmental budgets that are presented in Article um, Fifty Five. So these this is these are just the incremental amounts related to the changes either reclassifications, additions, or deletions in the pain classification plan. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, so let's head now to uh, our speaking queue. Let's take up Ms. Friedman. Uh, Beth Ann Friedman, Precinct 15. Um, do any of these positions represent um, or do any of these changes represent new positions? Uh, Mr. Foskett, do you know if these? Uh, I, yeah, I can say that the where they're they're added, some of them are new positions. But um, if you want a more detailed response than that, uh, perhaps we should go to the uh, Director of Human Resources, uh, okay. Ms. Malloy. Yeah, can we bring up the Director of Human Resources, please, to answer that question, Ms. Malloy? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Karen Malloy, Director of Human Resources. Um, I'm looking quickly through the list of where we're adding titles. Okay, 2A is not new, 2B is not new, C is a replacement, a new title. Um, uh, Mental health clinician is technically a new title, but that is because we had AYCC clinicians that were previously contracted. And after a review of how those uh, positions were classified, we deemed that those were more appropriately employees. So mental health clinician is new to the pay and class plan. And water and sewer account manager um, is a a title that was omitted from last year, although the position has been in existence for a couple of years now. Mm -hmm. 
I'm sorry, Ms. Malay, let me just cut you off there just to yeah. check in with, with Ms. Friedman. Ms. Friedman, is that enough of an answer or do you, would, would you like to continue enumerating through the positions, the, the, the classifications? Well, it's my understanding that this Warren article um, <clears throat> has the potential of creating a new position that um, ends up in the budget next year as something that town meeting approves. And I get confused as to what is a change of title versus the creation of brand new position. Mm. Um, so that's why I was asking the question. I see. So there, I still haven't gotten a full answer so far. None of the examples represent um, <clears throat> the creation of a brand new position that will end up in the in the budget. The um, it might be conversion of of position being paid of grants to something that's being paid out of the town budget. But I'm wondering if there are any positions that actually are being created for um, next year. Right, let's take another try at that. Ms. Malloy, uh, uh, without, without enumerating all of the positions, uh, it, are you able to identify uh, <laughs> examples uh, from- Henry, maybe, maybe I can- Mr. Foster, if you look at the, the numbers next to the various items, none of these figures represent a full salary. So these are, are adjustments to positions that are currently in the plan. Okay. The, um, the, I see. So you're saying, Mr. Foster, if there were new positions in there, we would see the full salary, which would be on the order of dozens of thousands of dollars rather than a few thousand. 800 or a thousand, yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. Thank you. Uh, let's take Mr. Trembley next. Ms. Nate, precinct, please. Ed Trembley, precinct 17. Uh, I'm sorry, precinct 19. I'm just um, curious about how this works. Um, for instance, uh, section 1C, energy project manager, MTP8 to MTP11. Yep. And then we move over a page and we're gonna delete a position, energy and project manager, MP, MTP8. So it looks like they're changing the position to MTP11 and making it impossible to go back to MP, MTP8. Is that Mr. I think I can answer yeah, that. Yeah, Mr. Foskett, because I assume like MTP8 to MTP11, that, that's the range, like 9, 10, 11, right? But then we're deleting. No, the, 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 uh, yeah, there are various levels in the, in the plan. Yeah. 9, 10, 11, okay? So the, the um, an, either an employee or a manager might, determine or request that the, the position be reclassified because the job description has changed. In other words, uh, maybe previously the person was uh, operating a, uh, you know, a, a small machine and then suddenly is operating a piece of heavy equipment or something to that effect. And responsibility is higher. So it requires different compensation. So MT, so just to make sure I understand uh, and for the meeting, MTP eight, for instance, there, there's like an old MTP eight, uh, and that position is being deleted. Uh, but there's a new MTP eight through eleven, uh, which may be different responsibility. No, 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 not not yeah. two. In other words, the person is now an MTP eight, and that job description is going away, and that person is now going to be in a position of of MPT eleven because it's a more responsible. Um, job that requires different compensation. Oh, so MTP 8 to MTP 11 is not the range, but that represents some, someone transitioned from 8 to 11? That's correct. Okay. Does so that then the reason why the MTP 8 is being deleted is because it's no longer needed. Yeah, because someone essentially got a, a promotion or elevated to MTP 11. In, in, in terms, yes. Okay. Uh, does that answer your question, Mr. Trembley? Well, yeah, but that leads to another one. Um, so the, since there's no money attached, is that, does that mean that that uh, position is currently empty? 
or just that there's no difference in pay? Mr. Foskett? It means that there's no difference in pay. Okay, sounds like the town's getting-, getting In other words, uh, the, the, in each of these positions, there are steps. So the person might be in a, uh, say hypothetically, a step six position, but a step three in the new one. And those may be the same number. Okay, so let's go to uh, Mr. Chapdelein. Do you, maybe, maybe you have a, uh, a more precise answer here. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Adam Chapdelein, town manager. In this specific instance uh, that's being inquired in regards to, for the better part of about a decade now, we have had an energy and a project manager. That position was vacated. In looking at the market, we determined that both the pay adjustment, uh, the actual job duties of that role, as well as the title needed to be upgraded. So what you see mapped out in sections one, two, and three is our intention to change the compensation of that position from an MTP eight to an MTP 11. If you look in section two, you see that we have what appears to be the creation of a sustainability manager being compensated at a level of MTP 11. And then in section three, the elimination of the energy and project manager title. And the cumulative effect of those three things is now having a sustainability manager compensated at the MTP 11 level and budgeted in the planning and community development office. Thank you. Uh, does that answer your question, Mr. Trembley? Do you have any, anything further? Well, I'm still scratching my head here a little bit. Um, does that, so does that mean we're not, we no longer have an energy and project manager at level M, MTP 11? Uh, Mr. Chapdelein? Adam Chaplin, town manager. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. That is correct. There is no longer a position. If this, if this uh, is voted on by town meeting tonight, there will no longer be a position of energy and project manager. However, they will officially in the pay and classification plan be the position of sustainability manager classified it at MTP 11, as which at, of which the position is currently filled out. We currently have a sustainability manager being paid at the level of MTP 11. Okay. So does this MTP 11 pay a lot more than MTP 8? Well, it looks like there's no, there's no difference in salary according to, like there's no adjustment here. Okay, it's just a, just a different description of job duties. That's, that's what it seems to be, yeah. Hmm. Well, I always wondered how this works. Is, is there any way of getting, um, you know, and, and, and I don't want to belabor the point now, it's a little late for that. But for next year, for instance, is there is there a way of getting a uh, a description of what all these various things are? Because I think it's a note that we can take and address offline for next year to make it more clear what all this means to someone who's not, you know, immersed in these classification titles. I am definitely not. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Moore. Uh, let's take Mr. Moore next. Name and precinct, please. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Christopher Moore, Precinct 14. I move to terminate debate on the article. Okay, we have a motion by Mr. Moore to terminate debate. Do we have a second? Uh, we have a second from Ms. Brazil. So let us take a vote now on whether to terminate debate on Article 48 for positions reclassification. Okay, if you are in favor of terminating debate on Article 48, vote yes. As soon as the portal allows your wave of precincts to vote. And if you uh, are in favor of continuing debate, you'll vote no. Vote yes to terminate debate, vote no to continue debate on positions reclassification. And again, uh, uh, 
voting is going to remain open for probably a couple minutes um, until we get a sufficient number of folks uh, voting. Uh, but when we do eventually close voting, uh, I will ask if, through a show of raised hands and Zoom at that point, uh, whether anyone's interested in uh, seeing all the, the voting screens, um, basically any objections to just skipping that. Um, and if there are any objections, uh, I'll just relay that. And since folks can't see the raised hands from other members, uh, I'll just relay the name of that person and we'll, um, we'll show the screens if there's any objections. Okay, we have about 200 votes so far. I'll try to get your votes in as quickly as you can. And this is um, for terminating debate requires a two thirds vote. Okay, still missing about 10 recently active uh, members who have not voted yet. Uh, several more who have not been active recently. So why don't we give another uh, 30 seconds. And uh, you could, if you have trouble with the portal, then you could always get your vote into the Q&A. Uh, 10 seconds, I'm oh, sorry, 20 seconds, 20 seconds. 15 seconds, 10 seconds, please get your votes in, five seconds until we close voting on terminating debate and let's close voting on terminating debate. Oh wait, uh, oh, let's see, hold up. Um, we're, we're still getting a, a, a voice of, a, a, I guess a, a verbal vote. Um, see how we all set? Panelists. Let's just check. Just want to make sure no one's actively trying to get their vote in. Don't want to cut them off. Okay, seeing none, let's uh, let's close voting now. We're all done. Yep. Okay, so debate is terminated uh, with uh, 207 in the affirmative, 14 in the negative, and two abstentions. So uh, if anyone objects to skipping these screens to show the votes, you can raise your hand in Zoom. Um, and if there are no objections, we will skip the remaining screens and move on to voting on the main motion. Um, I see a raised hand from Mr. Kaba. So let's uh, continue watching the screens. Um, and then once we get through all these precinct screens, we uh, will take a vote on the main motion for Article 48. Okay, so that's all the screens, um, all the precincts. So let's, let's open up a vote on the main motion for Article 48. And this is a majority vote. Okay, so if you are, so voting is now open on the main motion. If you are in favor, of reclassifying positions that involves deleting some positions and changing the pay on other positions or reclassifying them, uh, then you want to vote yes. If you're opposed to reclassifying positions and you want to keep them the way that they have been defined previously, then you would vote no. So with the waves of uh, voting, try to vote as soon as you can, and then we can uh, 
get through voting faster, uh, the, the sooner folks vote. We just passed the 200 vote mark. Uh, still waiting for about 20 folks who've been actively uh, engaged in the portal to still vote. So wait just a little bit longer. Try to get your votes in as soon as you can, please. Votes are still kind of trickling in. Um, let's just uh, give another 25 seconds. 20 seconds, you can always put your vote into the Q&A and just type it in if you're having trouble in the portal. 15 seconds till we close voting on Article 48, Positions Reclassification. Uh, 10 seconds. Five seconds until we close voting. And let's go ahead and close voting. And the vote passes. Uh, 214 in the affirmative, five in the negative, one abstention. Um, Article 48 passes. So we'll wait now for cycling through the precinct screens. And while we're waiting for that, uh, just let folks know that uh, actually on the previous article that we voted on, we actually, we passed the halfway mark of the 83 total articles to vote on, 77 from, uh, uh, from annual town meeting and, and six from the special town meeting uh, for a total of 83. We passed the halfway mark. That's the good news. The bad news is 25 of those, most of those were from the consent agenda. Um, so. It's kind of dubious to say that we're halfway done time-wise. Um, okay, so let's now open Article 49. Now that we've disposed of Article 48, and this is also uh, an article that's coming to us from uh, the report of the Finance Committee. Mr. Foskett, as chair of the Finance Committee, do you want to speak to this article? Yes, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Charles Foskett, Precinct 10, Chair of the Finance Committee. Mr. Moderator, um, I would like to move to table Article 49. Okay. Town has uh, settled with two um, uh, union organizations and is in negotiations with a third. And um, this uh, third organization may soon be uh, resolved. And um, we'd like to postpone this article or table this article until um, the clarity is reached on that uh, particular negotiation. And it should not be uh, such a, a very long time, but um, it, it's appropriate to uh, table it and uh, deal with it all at once. It, it will not change the total uh, dollar figure that's in Article 49 in the Finance Committee report. It will just reallocate those sums and allow town meeting to approve the uh, negotiated contracts. Okay, so we have a motion to lay, I mean, I'll kind of reinterpret a little bit, to, to lay Article 49 on the table. Uh, we have seconds already, the first second from Mr. Quinn. Uh, so let's enable raise hands in Zoom. Are there any objections to Mr. Foskett's motion to lay Article 49 for collective bargaining on the table to offer more time? Um, and we will come back to this later in, uh, in town meeting. Okay, seeing no objections, it is unanimous. Uh, so 
Article 49 is now laid upon the table. Uh, that brings us to Article 50, uh, Town Budgets. Um, and this is also an article coming to us from uh, the report of the Finance Committee. Mr. Mr. Foskett, do you want to? Um, yes, thank, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, so Article 50 refers to the budgets that are presented in Appendix B in the Finance Committee report. And um, it, it may, in, in the interest of efficiency, um, it may be useful for um, for you to follow uh, a procedure whereby uh, you request people to hold a particular budget, uh, sub budget, if um, they wish to debate it, so that we uh, can efficiently vote the articles after the debates. Yep. Okay, and so, yeah, so let me explain uh, what Mr. Foskett's referring to. Article 50 covers the town budgets. I'm going to name each of the department budgets and the enterprise funds. This exercise will be similar to the holds that we did on the consent agenda, um, except that a hold here means that you want to discuss that budget or that fund. Uh, to keep it simple and hopefully efficient, we're going to use raised hands in Zoom. If you wanna hold a budget or a fund, uh, so that it can be discussed. Uh, if you if there are no raised hands for a given budget or fund, then we just won't discuss it. There won't be any debate over it. Uh, you can find the budgets and funds uh, in the Finance Committee report, Appendix B. B is in budget. I don't think that's why they chose that letter, but um, Appendix B in the printed version of the FinCom report, Appendix B is immediately after page 30, like printed page 30. If you're looking at the PDF page numbers in the digital version, it's page 33. Uh, there are 27 department budgets, which are numbered one to 27, and five enterprise funds designated with the letters A through E. I'll name each of these in order with a brief pause in between. And if you wanna discuss a given budget or fund, please raise your hand in Zoom. And I'll call out the name of the first person I see requesting the hold and the name of the budget or fund. There won't be any seconds here. This will be simpler than what we did for the consent agenda. Uh, if there was a mistake and I accidentally attributed your name to a budget that you didn't intend to hold, uh, then please use the Q&A in Zoom to briefly explain the mistake and we'll fix the error as we go. We can do that kind of asynchronously as we're going through. Um, so I think this will be more clear once we actually get into it, uh, unless you're familiar with this from previous years in town meeting. Uh, once we've run through all the budgets and the funds to determine which ones should be discussed, we'll then begin discussion on the ones that were held. Okay, so let's get started. So can we bring up, um, let's see, the FinCom report, Appendix B. As I said, if, you're, if, you're, if we're presenting the PDF, uh, it'll be page 33. Okay, can we, can we show that on the screen here? Yeah, there we go. Okay, and the first thing we should see, we should see like these boxes uh, and the first one in Appendix B. Let's see. And we have a point of order, but uh, Mr. Levy says there's no point, uh, no need to call him until after the process is done, okay. Uh, so we will come back to that. Um, okay, good. So uh, let's make sure that raised hands are enabled in Zoom. And I'll just give a brief pause in between each of these. So, so number one, uh, finance committee, if you want to hold. Okay, so we have a raised hand from uh, Mr. Revelak. Uh, okay, number. Okay, so that's clear hands. Uh, number two, select board. If you're interested in discussing the select board uh, budget, raise your hand. Seeing none, let's move on to number three, town manager. Can we scroll down? Okay, so we have a raised hand by uh, Mr. Marr and Mr. Leone on um, select board, or I'm sorry, the town manager. 
budget. Uh, number four, human resources. Anyone interested in discussing human resources? Now it's time to raise your hand. Seeing none, moving on to number five, budget number five, uh, information technology, IT. Uh, if you're interested in discussing that, you can raise hands now. Um, seeing none, let's move on to six, comptroller. If you're interested in uh, discussing the comptroller budget, raise your hand now. Seeing none, let's move on to uh, budget number seven, treasurer collector. If you want to discuss this budget, you can raise your hand. Seeing none, let's move on to budget number eight, postage. If you're interested in discussing postage but budget, raise your hand now. Seeing none, let's move on to number nine, the budget for board of assessors. If you want to discuss this, please raise your hand in Zoom. Seeing none, let's move on to budget number 10, legal, the legal budget. If you're interested in discussing this budget, raise your hand in Zoom. Seeing none, let's move on to uh, budget 11, town clerk. We have one hand by Ms. Benedict. Let's see. Okay, thank you. Let's, uh, uh, lower hands now, thank you. Okay, so let's move on to um, board of, uh, uh, okay, hands are cleared now. Um, budget 12, board of registrars. If you want, if you're interested in discussing the board of registrars budget, raise your hand now. Seeing none, let's move on to 13, uh, parking budget. If you wanna discuss the parking budget, raise your hands now. Seeing none, let's move on to budget 14, planning and community development. If you want to discuss this budget, raise hands. Okay, we have a hand from uh, Mr. Oster. Okay, it's clear hands. And let's move on to budget number 15, redevelopment board. If you want to discuss this budget, raise your hands now. Seeing none, let's move on to uh, Budget number 16, Zoning Board of Appeals. If you want to discuss this budget, raise your hands now in Zoom. Okay, we have one from Ms. Friedman. Okay, okay let's lower hands and uh, budget number 17, Public Works. Mr. Tremblay, yes. And it's a bit of a tradition there. Um, uh, let's lower hands now and let's go to budget number, uh, let's scroll down a bit to budget number 18. It's a couple pages down, uh, facilities. Anyone who's interested in discussing the facilities budget, raise your hands now in Zoom. Okay, Ms. Thornton. Okay, let's uh, clear hands. And let's move on to budget number 19, police services. Okay, we have a hand from Mr. Tremblay. Okay, and Mr. Weinstein. And let's go to budget number 20, fire services. Any, if there's any interest in discussing the fire services budget, uh, raise your hands now. Seeing none, uh, budget number 21, inspections. If you want to discuss the inspections budget, raise your hand now, Mr. Jameson, okay. Okay, it's clear hands. And budget number 22, education. If you want to discuss the education budget, yes. Ms. Exton. Okay, number of folks, okay. So it's clear hands now. Okay, and budget number 23, libraries. If you're interested in discussing the library's budget, uh, raise your hands now and Zoom. Okay, seeing none. Uh, let's go down to budget number 24, health and human services. If you want to discuss the health and human services budget, how's time, raise your hands. Seeing none, let's move down to uh, budget 25. We're almost done with the budgets. Um, uh, retirement. If you're interested in discussing the retirement budget, 
Uh, raise your hand now. And, and yeah, there is a question in the Q&A about possibly taking the education budget out of order uh, for the superintendent's uh, schedule. And, and uh, I'm, I'm happy to do that, um, just as we did with like Minuteman, for instance. Um, uh, OK, so seeing none for the retirement budget, let's uh, go on to budget number 26. Um, actually, let's see, Mr. Tremblay is saying something to me. I'm asking about police and for facilities. OK, so I'll, I'll take a note of that. We did, we did have Mr. Weinstein for, uh, for police budget number 19. So I think we're covered there. Thank you, Mr. Tremblay. Um, budget number 26, the insurance budget. Anyone interested in discussing that? Raise your hand now. Okay, seeing none. Uh, budget report from, okay. Um, uh, budget number 27, reserve fund. If you're interested in discussing that budget, raise hands now. Okay, seeing none. I guess, well, that's a fund now. I'm not sure why the fund has a numeric designation, but okay. So let's move down to um, fund A, enterprise fund A, water and sewer enterprise fund. If you're interested in discussing this enterprise fund, raise hands now. There's only a few of these, so we're almost done. Uh, seeing none, let's move down to uh, the uh, letter B, Recreation Enterprise Fund. If you want to discuss this fund, raise hands now. Seeing, seeing none, let's move down to uh, letter C, the Ed Burns Arena Enterprise Fund. If you want to discuss this fund, you can raise hands now. Okay, there's only a couple more. Let's go to um, letter D, the Council on Aging. Um, I'm not sure what the trans is short for, uh, but the Council on Aging, the Enterprise Fund. Um, uh, if you're interested in discussing this, raise hands now. Seeing none. And last but not least, um, uh, letter E, Arlington Youth Counseling Center. Uh, enterprise fund. If you're interested in discussing this fund, you can raise your hand now. Um, seeing none, that takes us through all the, up. Oh, uh, we have one from Ms. Benedict. Ms. Benedict, I'm assuming that's for the, uh, uh, let's see, the Arlington Youth Counseling Center Enterprise Fund. If that's not the case, let us know in the Q&A and we can fix that. Okay, so that takes us through the budgets and the uh, the funds. So, okay, so we wanted to take um, uh, let's take Miss Exton and um, Michael Mason to panelists, please, and uh, Dr. Homan, Superintendent of Schools, I believe, is already on the panel. So why don't, uh, I'm happy to take uh, Ms. Exton's uh, request to take that out of order because of the superintendent's uh, schedule. So hopefully we have enough time here, but 10.39. So we need to wrap up in about 20-ish minutes tonight. So hopefully we can at least get through the school budget. Um, so do we wanna bring uh, 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 Dr. Homan, uh, do, you, do you want to speak? Or uh, Ms. Exton, did, did you want to introduce the school budget? Uh, yes, oh. please, oh, Mr. I'm sorry. Moderate. I'm sorry, just, just quickly, we do want to take, uh, we want to circle back to uh, Mr. Levy's point of order. So just I'm Mr. Moderator, uh, Dave Levy, Precinct 18. Yeah. Um, would it be possible at some point to hear from Mr. Foskett as head of the Finance Committee about his views of the overall budget and, um, you know, concerns with overrides or where the town may be, you know, um, having some concerns and, you know, expenses versus revenues at some point. I think, I think we'd all benefit from just his, you know, perception, just studying the numbers in more detail than uh, some of us. 
um, let's take that offline. Uh, and since we're short on time here, let, let's uh, let's try to get through the school budget like uh, presentation and discussion uh, while we have Dr. Homan here. Uh, thank you. So uh, let's see, Ms. Exton, did, did you want to introduce the, the school budget? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Liz Exton, Precinct 13 and Chair of the Arlington School Committee. Uh, I request that the pre-recorded presentation of the Arlington Public Schools budget be, or the school committee budget um, be played. Okay, so let's bring that up. And also just uh, like the procedures that I mentioned earlier about the straw polls, like every 15 minutes about terminating the debate. I, I'm not gonna do that here during the budgets because that'd be really weird because this is just an oddly shaped warrant article that has a lot in it as far as budgets. So it doesn't really apply here. So, uh, so don't worry about those interruptions. Um, so if you could bring up the video for, um, I appear to be trying to locate the video. Chair of the Arlington School. Okay, are we not finding it in the ACMI playlist? Let's see. Oh, I think we have it. Good evening, I'm Elizabeth Exton, Precinct 13 and Chair of the Arlington School Committee. The Arlington Public Schools have had a busy and productive school year, including the onboarding of our new Superintendent of Schools, Dr. Elizabeth Homan. In September 2021, students returned to buildings full-time after two years of disrupted schooling. And in February 2022, we opened the new STEAM and Performing Arts Wings at Arlington High School. In addition to maintaining our high quality programming across the district, this budget works to support students in all areas of development and promotes equity of access. This budget includes support for students' social, emotional, and mental health, addresses increasing enrollments at the secondary level, ensures access to necessary related services for all students, and continues work towards goals of the five-year budget plan. This year's budget also eliminates elementary instrumental music fees and high school athletic fees. This change supports our continued work toward equity by allowing access to all for these important aspects of a well-rounded education. Additionally, participation in the performing arts and athletics support improved mental health and enhanced student engagement in school. APS is able to include the aforementioned budget additions despite continuing to spend 10% less per pupil than the town manager 12 average. Unfortunately, the Arlington Public School teacher salaries continue to be behind those of the other Town Manager 12 towns. And APS would like to close that gap in an effort to attract and retain a strong and diverse workforce. Now, Superintendent Holman and Mr. Mason will share more specific details about this year's budget. Thank you. Good evening, town meeting members. My name is Liz Holman, and I am the superintendent of Arlington Public Schools. I am joined by our, by our chief financial officer, Michael Mason, and we would like to begin by thanking our student artists whose artwork graced the cover of our FY23 budget, which we are pleased to present to you this evening. I want to begin by articulating what some of our priorities were as we developed the FY23 budget. Chief among them was um, enrollments. We are keeping a close eye on enrollments and have increasing enrollments at the secondary level in particular and leveling off enrollments at the elementary level. Also among our priorities was ensuring that we met the needs of students as we recover from the COVID-19 pandemic, making sure that we can offer them opportunities to connect with school in meaningful ways and support their academic needs as well as their social, emotional and mental health. As I said, enrollments are a major driver of the Arlington Public Schools budget. What this slide is demonstrating are the different projections that we have gotten over the years to help us project enrollments and uh, budget accordingly. And key, the key thing to realize about this graph is that it's demonstrating that while our October 1 snapshot demonstrated right here by this little green dot showed our enrollments right along our projections, um, we currently have more students in the system as of March uh, than we had in October. And so it makes it difficult to project what our enrollments will be in the coming years. And we anticipate they'll be somewhere in between um, the projections that we've received from our vendors or that we've calculated ourselves and some of the larger projections that we've gotten before the COVID-19 pandemic. As you can see, there's a huge impact of the pandemic right here. Um, this is where we lost enrollments and we're now gaining a lot of those enrollments back. Mr. Mason? Yes, thank you, Dr. Holman. And so what this slide will demonstrate is that Arlington Public Schools from fiscal 2016 to fiscal 2020 trails behind the town manager 12 average, as well as the state average per pupil average. Let me clarify that. And that the gap is, is if you look at a trend line, the gap seems to continue to grow year to year. 
Um, and despite having trailing behind our town manager 12 and the state average, we have been able to still provide an excellent education for the students of Arlington. However, with that per pupil average trailing the town manager 12, it also leads that to us trailing behind in salaries of our largest direct instruction staff, which teaching assistants are behind the town manager 12 average of up to 40% on the low end, and our teachers are 5% below average. And when you compare this to even other work groups in the town in the in the town of Arlington, you'll see that our staff is below uh, their average compensation to their comparable in the town manager 12. Overall, this slide here is a reflection of what our budget is made of and what our budget is what we value. And over 75% of our budget is toward direct instruction, which includes elementary education, secondary education, as well as uh, about 25.8% going directly towards students with special needs and special education. The other is covered by management and administration, as well as curriculum development, which has that supports the instruction, and as well as facilities and other um, operational uh, costs. Overall, our total budget for fiscal 23 is $84,447,869. That is $4,343,235 higher than the fiscal 22 budget. However, before that does, does not go directly to just adding positions, we do have to look at, you know, what cost of living increases that we have to give to our staff. We have to look at any contract, contractual obligations that we may have with vendors or even our staff that are, have contracts or um, our, even our bargaining units. And then as well as we have to look at inflationary costs, um, and that's what we were covering about $448,000 to that, or about $450,000 rounded up to be even. This, with we had to reduce some positions or reduce allocations of certain resources by $2.1 million to actually leave us with something to be able to provide uh, funding for new positions or new initiatives that we would like to take on, which leaves us about $2.4 million uh, for proposed additions that I will hand back over to Dr. Holman to discuss with you. Thank you, Mr. Mason. And this slide gives some highlights of some of the additions that we are prioritizing for the FY23 year. Among them, you will notice that we are eliminating um, instrumental music fees and athletic fees in an effort to give some funds directly back to taxpayers who might want their children to connect with school in meaningful ways during extracurricular times. We are also adding library librarians and digital learning teachers, interventionists, English learner teachers, special education teachers, team chairs and coordinators, as well as content area teachers at the secondary level in response to increased enrollment. As you'll notice down here, we have been able to use budget efficiencies in order to fund other additions, and we have a net additions of 14.1 additional positions in the Arlington Public Schools in an effort to ensure that our students continue to receive an excellent and equitable education in Arlington. Thank you very much for sticking with us for this brief presentation, and we look forward to answering any questions that you might have. Thank you. Okay, so yeah. uh, go ahead. Let's see, uh, Ms. Exton, do you have anything to add before we uh, open up to questions? No, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Okay. okay, so we are running a little late. So we're at uh, 1049 and uh, I do want to make sure that we have the opportunity to uh ask uh dr Holman any questions uh, about this or, or the school department any questions about the budget uh so if we do run a little late i do ask for your forbearance um so let's take uh mr jameson from the speaking queue for any questions about the education budget thank you mr moderator gordon jameson precinct 12. Um, during our um, precinct meetings, spring precinct meetings of 12 and 14, um, one of the bracket uh, parents um, uh, presented a, um, an issue of concern that I, I'll raise now. Um, the bracket um, has, a, um, and I checked it on the report, um, uh, its uh, enrollment is down about 17 and doesn't seem to be rebounding like most of the other elementary schools are. 
Um, is that just um, the population that goes to the bracket or is there some internal issues that need to be addressed? Uh, Dr. Hellman, do you have a, an answer for Mr. Jameson? Sure, thank you, Mr. Jameson. Um, so we are closely monitoring enrollments and we have seen trends like this one. Uh, the trend you're noticing at Bracket is a true trend. We've seen enrollments dip there. It's hard to tell whether or not that's because of real estate trends, because of moves in and out of town because of the pandemic. Um, it's not unlike trends we've seen at some of the other schools. So we've had other places where we've um, taken sections that we may have had three sections, it's reduced to two, or we may have had four and we've taken it down to three because of students who left town or left for private schools during the pandemic and those enrollments just simply never bounced back. Um, we do have a bounce back in enrollment um, at bracket for next school year. So we're beginning to see some of those enrollments return, uh, but we also have um, a net we're net down one section at bracket, which is reflected in the FY23 budget for next year. So we're not seeing that as a programmatic challenge as we don't have any trends that we're seeing at the bracket school in particular that indicate to us that families are leaving for any one particular reason that's linked to programming. Um, however, I will say that we do have some relatively volatile enrollments throughout the district that are impacting our budgetary planning. Uh, my, my only comment um, in reply would be that by far and away, the bracket was the most heavily hit, and it has not bounced back really at all. Uh, granted, you see things, uh, positive things for next year. Um, thanks very much, mm -hmm. Mr. Moderator. Great, thank you. Uh, so let's take someone out of order here, just a, a voice of, I, think, I don't think we've heard yet this town meeting. Uh, let's take Ms. Thornton next. Name and precinct, please. Uh, Barbara Thornton, uh, Precinct 16, and I just wrote a, a Q&A a question. I'm not sure I should be here. I'm here for the uh, Appendix B18, but it just says Article 50. Total. Oh, for facilities? Oh, yeah. okay. So I think we'll, we'll probably just reset the speaking queue between each of the budgets. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, um, oh, in the vein of taking someone who I don't think we've heard from yet, uh, let's take uh, uh, Ms. Slutsky. Name and precinct, please. Let's see. Ms. Lutzke, are you able to unmute? There you yes, are. Yes, hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, name and precinct, please. Uh, Amy Slutsky, precinct 17. Um, thank you, Superintendent Palman, for the very challenging, important work that you do. Um, I'm actually a, a pediatric occupational therapist, and uh, I know how important the paraprofessional staff is, and I'm concerned at, at how relatively low their, their pay is, is. I don't know if you're the person to ask about this, but um, I want to make sure that this concern is raised. Absolutely, we share it um, and we have taken it into consideration in budgeting for this year by making sure that we set aside funds that we can use for collect bar bargaining purposes to make sure that we have competitive salaries with our neighboring towns and that we take care of those who do some of the most important work of the district, the paraprofessionals are among them. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's take uh, Mr. Kepline next. Hi, thank you, Mr. Moderator, Mark Kepline, Precinct 9. I've not been on town meeting for about 10 years, so I wanted this opportunity to ask, during the height of the pandemic, Arlington didn't furlough any employees, you know, despite those employees not being able to deliver services, you know, say athletics or uh, music or, uh, uh, you know, classroom assistance, um, Brookline furloughed 196 employees in the town. And these employees worked out, you know, were able to do fine because they were able to retain medical benefits and the state unemployment compensation is second highest in the country. And they got $600 a week on top of that from the federal government. So I'm why, wondering why you didn't attempt to save taxpayers millions of dollars by doing this. Thank you. Dr. Homan, do you have an answer for Mr. Kepline? 
Um, I believe my response would be that our teachers and uh, several of our coaches were working during the shutdown. Um, many of them remotely are coming up with alternatives to remote programming. I'm not aware of any municipalities in the state um, or really in the country that furloughed educational workers during the height of the pandemic. Okay. Um, I may not agree, but um, I can't really you know, fight that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, actually, I do want to ask, Dr. Homan, uh, since we are running close to 11 p.m., which is usually when we uh, adjourn, uh, is there a possibility for you to return? If, because it seems like there may be plenty more questions for you on Monday, or sh uh, uh, or is that not going to be a possibility? Because I know you're going to have a tight schedule. I, I will make what, what needs to work work, Mr. Moderator. Thank you. Um, uh, let's also take, uh, I don't think we've heard from Mr. Oster uh, uh, in some time. Let's take Mr. Oster next. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, Adam Oster uh, from uh, Precinct 3. Um, my question concerns the school department's role uh, in the town's sustainable transportation plan and its net zero action plan. Uh, which uh, concerns climate change goals. Um, I so see those two efforts as closely connected, and of course the school operation is a large part of the, of the uh, municipal operation. It, so in the school budget for next year, uh, what actions does the school department plan to take to help implement these plans? And I'm gonna just, the examples I'm gonna give are just for illustrative purposes, I don't, suppose you're necessarily doing any of these things, but for instance, working with the town and the MBTA and allies to improve bus service to and from school, including restoration of the 79 bus, identification of obstacles to safe walking and biking to school, including uh, identifying safety hotspots, uh, and integration into the curriculum of climate science and related topics. Uh, again, these are just examples. Uh, I'm not asking for these measures in particular. Yeah, I mean, we are starting to like venture out of scope here discussing curricula of the schools. Uh, but Dr. Homan, do you have a brief answer uh, to Mr. Oster's question? Sure. Um, I can report that we are in the process of procuring two electric school buses, which we're very excited about through a grant to the EPA. Um, and those are going to begin our process of turning over our bus fleet so that those are more sustainable vehicles. And we intend to do that slowly over time. It does require us to change our infrastructure so that we can charge those vehicles. Uh, we are also working on obstacles to biking and safety, installing more opportunity, more options for students to um, secure their bikes when they are at school and looking into bike safety routes uh, for students to school. We're particularly right now collaborating with members of the town on um, the bike uh, setup lanes in front of the new wings of the new high school. Um, and I would have to defer to my curriculum experts when it comes to climate science, but we certainly have several courses at the high school that are offered in that area. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Dr. Homan, and thank you, Mr. Moderator. Okay, thank you, Mr. Oster. Let's take uh, Mr. Rosenthal next. I've been waiting patiently uh, to put at the queue. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, Mark Rosenthal, Precinct 14. I have two things I want to mention, but I think they'll both be pretty quick. Uh, the first one is that I also attended the uh, joint precinct 12, precinct 14 uh, precinct meeting. And there was a uh, mother who attended that, who uh, said something about bracket that really surprised me. She said that it was uh, it, her perception that Brackett is considered one of the least desirable schools in town among parents, which I found shocking because for the last 20, 25 years, it's always been considered one of the most desirable. And so one thing she brought up was- uh, so, so let me just uh, interrupt Ms. Rosenthal. This is kind of drifting outside of scope as far as the kind of popularity of schools. But uh, if you have a question perhaps about parity of the experience, then that might be relevant to the budget. Okay, uh, if I can say one more sentence on this and then I'll get to something that is directly related to the budget. Okay. Um, 
apparently there's a concern about maintenance of equipment, especially playground equipment, and uh, a child seems to have been seriously injured there. So not related to the budget, but something that I thought was important uh, to raise with, uh, with the people in charge of the school system. Now, uh, as for the item related to the budget, I have a question, which is probably for Dr. Mason, uh, because in one of the slides he showed, uh, he was talking about how uh, compensation for employees uh, of the school system uh, compares to other towns. And it got me wondering, do you happen to know uh, the what the aggregate total uh, dollar figure would be to uh, if every employee uh, if every employee's salary was raised to the uh, average of what the surrounding communities, uh, you know, you know what, what that figure would be, how much would it cost the town? Uh, Dr. Mason, do you happen to have an answer to that? Uh, thank you, uh, Michael Mason, Chief Financial Officer. I actually do not have an answer for that. What I could say is that with the current funding, that we're receiving, we're not, we will not be able to accomplish that. Um, so we have uh, proposed a budget that would hopefully meet a happy medium and get some of our, uh, our some of our goals is to actually try to at least get some of the bottom uh, or lower level uh, uh, salary levels higher and more attractable for um, new new uh new potential candidates to come to our district thank you okay uh thank you uh if i may suggest uh it i think it would be a good idea to try and calculate that fig that figure for next year so at least the town would know uh how much of a stretch it would be for us to try and come up to the average thank right. you thank you i trust uh, dr mason could consider taking a note on whether to uh, do that for next year let's take uh thank you uh, Mr. Mart, next. John Mart, Precinct 14. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, two previous speakers have spoken to the uh, lack of uh, average salary compared to uh, surrounding uh, comparable communities. And I, I will be very brief because those points have been made. But as long as I've been at town meeting, there has been promises to, build, to bring our teachers who do a tremendous job. Uh, on a per capita basis, we spend less than our surrounding communities, which must be a reflection of the quality of our teachers. But we still lag behind. And for many years, we've been assured that this will be rectified. I'm heartened to hear that that is being addressed by the superintendent but I think uh, that uh, time is well past while that, that should occur. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Uh, let's take Mr. Moore next. Name and precinct team, please. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Christopher Moore, precinct 14. I move to terminate debate on the article. Uh, sorry, on the school budget. Um, let's see, can we terminate debate on individual budgets? Um, yes. Okay. That is so, how we've done it in the past. Okay. Okay. Uh, if you'd rather have a different motion, I'd be open to that too. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, so uh, do we, we have a second uh, on Mr. Moore's motion to terminate debate on the education budget. Um, so let's bring up a vote to terminate debate. And this will be uh, a two thirds vote. And so if this vote passes, then we'll be done. Uh, talking about the education budget, and we'll move on. At that point, we'll, we'll just adjourn the meeting, uh, I imagine. But um, otherwise, we will continue debate, and we might have to continue that uh, or discussion on the education budget uh, when we reconvene on Monday. Okay, so voting should imminently be open for whether to terminate debate on the education budget. 
not the entirety of Article 50, which is uh, like the entirety of town budgets um, and enterprise funds, but just specifically the education budget. Uh, so if you are in favor of terminating debate on the education uh, budget, uh, vote yes. If you're in favor of continuing debate on or discussion on um, the education budget, then you'll, you'll want to vote no. I see we had a point of order that was raised and it has now been lowered. So we will continue voting. This is a two thirds vote. I wanted to terminate debate on the education budget. And just a time check, it is 11.05 uh, PM. I apologize that we're running a little over tonight. We have about 180 votes cast. We're still missing uh, about 20 from recently active uh, members in the portal. So if you're present, please uh, try to get your vote in as soon as you can. See one mention in the Q and A that voting is not working. If you're able to uh, uh, vote through the Q and A, please do so. If you're having trouble voting through the portal, yeah, I see that uh, someone's pointing out that the screen the screen here says that it's terminating debate on Article 50, um, not the school budget. Uh, I don't know if we actually have the proper uh, labeling in the system for that because we have to preload those. Um, otherwise, it takes time during the meeting. So we'll check on that going forward. But um, I guess I will say I will make a visual administrative change and say that this is not for terminating debate on the entirety of Article 50. This is narrowly terminating debate on the education budget uh, within Article 50. Um, and we'll try to, uh, I apologize for uh, that inconsistency. We'll try to resolve that going forward when we re reconvene on Monday so we don't have that confusion anymore. But yeah, this, this will not terminate debate on the entirety of Article 50, just the education budget portion of it. Okay, so we still have some, a number of votes we're waiting on. Uh, if you have not voted yet, uh, well, and also please make sure um, that you confirm your vote. Don't just leave it stuck on the confirmation page. Uh, so please check your screen, make sure that you've confirmed your vote on whether to terminate debate on the education budget within Article 50. So let's see. There's still another a number of folks who are outstanding, but let's just give another 20 seconds. And if you're having trouble through the portal, you can, uh, you can vote through the Q&A or you can call Ms. Brazil, uh, 15 seconds, and then we'll close voting on termination of debate of the education budget, 10 seconds, five seconds. Okay, let's uh, close voting on termination of debate of the education budget, and it passes. So debate is now terminated on uh, the education budget, um, and uh, Dr. Homan, Dr. Mason, you are free to go. Um, and uh, we, we thank you for your time, taking the time tonight, especially running uh, late as we are. So thank you for that. Okay, so now with the education budget behind us, um, and it being 11.08, 11.09 p.m., I would uh, happily entertain uh, a motion to adjourn at this point. Mr. Mo Mr. Moderator, I'd yes, like Mr. a notice of reconsideration. Oh, thank you. Yes, any notices of reconsideration? Thank you. Thanks for the reminder. Um, Mr. Moderator? Yes, Mr. Oscar, Precinct Oscar. 10. Um, I'd like to serve notice of reconsideration on Article uh, 48. 48? Okay. Do we have any? Uh, uh, I assume that Ms. Uh, Ms. Brazil will, will note that. Uh, was that your point of order? Uh, yes. Okay. okay, thank you. So we'll clear that. And we have a, we have a second from uh, Mr. Miller uh, to serve notice of reconsideration. Um, actually, 
And uh, let's see, uh, do we have any other, uh, let's enable raise hands in Zoom for anyone else who has notices of reconsideration on any of the articles that we voted on. Uh, note that there were no notices of reconsideration on any of the special town meeting articles, and those would need to be dealt with before the dissolution of special town meeting. And since special town meeting has been dissolved, there's there's no opportunity for uh, notice for um, uh, reconsideration. Okay, so we have two, uh, Mr. Frosco. Yes, uh, I move we adjourn. Actually, before we take that, we do have a uh, raised hand from, uh, actually we have, uh, yeah, two raised hands. Uh, let's take uh, Ms. Uh, Ms. Malofchik first, and then we'll take Ms. Benedict after that. Let's see, Ms. Malofchik, Malofchik, are you able to unmute and give us your name and precinct and the article in which you're uh, giving notice of reconsideration. Ms. Malofchik, can you hear us? While we're working out uh, a potential microphone issue, let's actually take um, Ms. Benedict next, and we can circle back to Ms. Malopchek. Ms. Benedict, uh, you have your hand raised. Um, yeah, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Name Benedict, Precinct. Precinct 21. I was going to make a motion to reconsider uh, Article 50, but then I realized we were just terminating debate. We weren't really voting on the actual article, correct? That's right. We have not voted on, we have neither terminated debate on Article 50, uh, nor have we voted on it. Um, we've only terminated debate on the education budget within that. Oh, that, I'm sorry, that's what I meant. That's that's one I want to reconsider. You want to reconsider termination of debate uh, on the education budget. Correct. Um, hmm. uh, we'll take note of that. And I don't know if that's actually legitimate. I'll have to actually check the book on that. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, and let's see. Uh, and can we take uh, Ms. Ms. Malopchik, are you able to uh, get your microphone working? Uh, Ms. Malopchik, are you able to, a uh, computer glitch? Uh, I think that means it's a computer glitch that, okay, the hand is no longer raised. Okay. Did not mean to raise hand. Okay. Um, I see Mr. Kepline has a point of order. Uh, Mr. Kepline, and can we make this really brief? Yes, I wish to reconsider on um, uh, the uh, section 24 of the budget, Health and Human Services. I'd like that to be discussed. Uh, uh, okay, I'll take a note of that, and I'll like, again. I'll, I'll need to double check uh, whether a notice of reconsideration should apply in that case. Um, so yeah, I'll take a note. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so Mr. Foskett, uh, yeah, moderator Charles Foskett, precinct ten. Uh, I move we adjourn. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second from Ms. Brazil. Uh, any, any raised hands in Zoom to object to the motion to adjourn? Seeing none, it's unanimous and we are adjourned and we will reconvene on Monday, uh, May 16th at 8, 8 p.m. Thanks everyone. Sorry for going late tonight. Have a good weekend.